All right, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and welcome to the stream. Today we got some stationers, and we're gonna add another crew member. That's right. Too much work, not enough people. Something like that, anyways. So, um, I'm gonna let you guys finish this round here. Do, 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 do. You go take it off of auto here. Um, pin it. Oh, somewhere you got pin it. Um, um, tent. No, no, there's no other T. How about there's a lot of ends in there? Um, ooh, that's a good one. Nah, 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 nah. That's what I see. Oh, you guys are rock and rolling on it. Do, 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 do. Neat. Is gonna go from level two to what? Ooh, level four. Awesome. All right, all right. Let's get the uh, little sound check in here. Make sure you know things work like they should, because it's embarrassing when they don't. And people say you're muted. I don't want to be muted. That means well, I'm talking to the cat. All right, sounds like audio is good. Gonna swap over here. Okay, now there's bugs. Okay. <laughs> Kata, thanks for the six months, man. Appreciate it very much. Should have come through though. Weird. All right. <clears throat> oh, they had a patch. What did they do in the patch? So I guess somebody told me they're putting the mood stuff on hold. I really don't see how that's going to affect anything space is the place that's right absolutely I almost said space is the place of the helpful hardware man that's supposed to be ace hardware I got my jingles mixed up it's not even a real jingle oh that's right they added so I don't understand why they added that so you can actually look at the celestial bodies oh no no that's to help with uh, uh, rocket mining or something like that. All right, so let's see what they said in the change log here. Uh, batch mode error. So that was the chips. Dedicated server error. Okay, so ground telescope recipe to electronics printer. Insulated pass event. Oh, that's cool. All right. All right. So can be useful for situations when you want to use a passive vent on a wall but don't want energy transferred. So well, that's really cool, actually. You don't think it has any function to track planets? I wonder why they added it for. Um, Ground-based telescope, auto-rotate during it placement, not working correctly, fixed. Um, disabled mood, hygiene, and food quality vitals. Issue where autosave would get stuck. All right. Well, sounds like stuff added that we don't use, right? Or something like that. I don't know. So we are on X part 50. Would be sick if you could travel between... Ba you know, if you look at the original synopsis of the game, it says build a space station. I mean, the only way you can do that is in creative mode when you go to the asteroids. I think. <laughs> can you use your jetpack? On the moon, for instance, and get high enough to where you're not in the gravitational pull and start hauling stuff up and, and create a space station. All right, so let me um, let me do an F5 here, and 
Hit it. Um, can you get into Discord? So we are going to be joined today by Kata. Used to be able to get to the rocket and travel to other planets. Well, the when Ben and I used it, we were able to. Hello. Oh, there he is. How you doing, Kata? Hello. Hey, I'm all right. All right. How's good, it going? Good. Oh, good. For some reason. Oh, I know what's wrong with me. Hang on. I know. This is uh, Red Munchkin Games' problem. He puts me on push to talk, so hang on. Just I'm gonna mute the stream. I can hear things I twice. No, it's it's when I when I on Fridays when I play with Red, I go to push to talk because he don't want to hear me talking to my chat, and I understand that. So, all right. Well, good. Welcome, Kata. So, joined by Kata, he's going to uh, work on a water cooled power generation, amongst other things, and um, see if he can. Uh, so you should be able to see me in the friends list on Steam and see if you can join the game. Yep, giving that a try. Seems to be working, got password prompt. All right. They used, they used to scroll a lot more information, <clears throat> but um, no longer shows up. Maybe it's still in the game. I'm just not seeing it. Uh, I did get a null ref. It's sticking at 100%, but it's not unusual for me. Now, sometimes Ben will get null refs from time to time when you're joining. Now, he tried to connect last time, and it was because of my mod. He didn't. Oh, I think I, I think I know why. Um, I still have the paint mod on. I think I oh, need to take yeah. that off. That's probably causing this issue. You're causing an issue. Just like always. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I don't know how it's gonna. Yeah, it's kicked me out. Oh, good. Uh, let's see here. Right, let me dump all the way out to make sure. I'd have to say Stationers is probably the only game I play that I haven't modded. Oh, I don't... I seem to have when I do a new world. I don't have the game's circle difficulty anymore. Make sure it's uh, checked under workshop. Yes, it is. Oh, maybe I need to move it up in the priority. Let me uh, check mine here real quick. I had problems with it when I first got it, and I had to check it, create a game, and then save, come out, reload it, and then it was all dialed in. And uh, I guess that's to be blamed on how Rocket Works is doing stuff. Let me just do a new world quickly then. Uh, <laughs> ben says, oh, I have that custom mod installed. Yeah, so... So Core is at top, Game Circle is at the bottom. On my end. All right, I'm just reloading now to see if that helps. Yeah. It's definitely ticked, uh, and the paint mod is unticked. All right.
Okay, I'm ready to try again. Alright, hang on one sec. Alright, you go. Okay, it's prioritizing thing or processing things. Prioritizing. We got a lot of things in this game. A lot of things probably can be uh, recycled too. Hey, look at that! Yay! All right, let's see where are you joined at over here? I think. I am in. There he is. Oh wow! Hello. Hey. <laughs> hey there's Kata. All right, so um, let me give you a tour, kind of different watching okay. and then being in it. So this is our there main, it is. <laughs> there it is. This is our main fuel platform. This was the first greenhouse. Power generation's off to the left there. All of our solar panels. And um, yep. over here is the furnace. The advanced furnace is over here. I'm not allowed over here. Ben doesn't let me play the play with this thing because I blow it up too many times. Oh, well, these red lights keep you away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this is greenhouse number two. This is the one that's actually. We'll have to get you a chair in oh. there. Or there's Ben. Yeah, there's Ben. Um, and then over here, this is where I was making the solid fuel. That's uh, it's offline right now. Okay. And then if we go over here, this is our filtered area. And then uh, this is our wall of. Uh, I have always been impressed by this power board. I've tried is... to replicate it, but I have not managed to yet. Oh no, Ben! Ben's the whiz behind that. Yeah, that's really. Um, I, I'm really impressed by that board. And then downstairs, this is where we're currently working, and yet there's some more tools down here. Resources. This was our first working uh, furnace until they did the phase change, and then it it would overheat too fast, so we couldn't actually get. Um, power from it and then we just said let's try something simple and then that's when we did what we call generator number two. Oh, oh this is a generator room yeah here's some of your water <laughs> thanks yeah so I, I need to make another tank and probably pull that one off because you said yeah. small tank and i was thinking small tanks but i'm thinking you're thinking the small tanks the golf ball looking things yeah, I'm thinking of the structure. You need about... Oh, I so filled one of those. Oh, This is generator number two, which mm -hmm. has got four active vents. So we're trying to figure out um, why when you hover over an active vent, you get a message about restricted flow or something like that. The flow rate. And So that's normally caused by pipe not having enough but it's that four megapascals so well and then we we have the same problem over here so it's replicated the same but we're going to doing a third one over here so instead of putting the fans indirectly we're putting them directly to see if we can balance it out that way yeah so this was this is generator so it goes it goes one which doesn't work two three and then this is four and then your work area you got plenty of room back here for your fish tank It's here. Yep. So I need a bit of surface room to put the the large radiators. Um, I used. I, I. Are you wanting to use the nitrous oxide or just regular fuel? Um. Wh whatever you want. You can. We have regular fuel and noxix. Nox. And you can do what Ben did. So if you walk over here, the the purple line is our heated nitrogen coming from the generator. And then this is Ben's sandbox. Okay. So this is where we cool the nitrogen that comes from the generators. And then he takes it and makes sure it gets warmed or cooled and make sure that it doesn't stay overly cold. And then he's using over here. You can see he's got one of those large uh, radiators up above. So you can, you can dig above. 
Yeah, this okay. Is, this is what he's been currently <clears throat> working on. He ran into some busted pipes and logic. So, good morning, Flip. How you doing? So, oh, yeah. So, he's using water. Yeah, this is a really good, this is a really good method. Water's really good at retaining heat. I Her guess mole? someone's going to have to explain it to me using crayons and talk to me like I'm a fourth grader. So, I'll get it eventually. And then here it is where we're maintaining the pressure for the generator so we can keep enough um, 100, 150 kilopascals in the... Uh, rooms oh, that's a good idea so like you're forcing a small right. amount into a small well, area we, we started stacking um pressure regulators but they couldn't keep up so i said well let's put, use turbos they take more power um but um they're more consistent so yes yeah, good idea all right so i think probably what you want to do is maybe get a bigger um uh, hard backpack the biggest, so get, biggest yeah. suit and an air tank <laughs> and batteries so we have made some of the, what I call exotic. So you have to check all the different machines and see where we, so this has got, doesn't have any, got Invar down here, but uh, you, you get yourself all squared away. I will find a tool printer. All right. Oh, that's going to be top side. That's the only one where the tool printer. Uh, I'll find a tool printer. All right. And then I'm going to have to make another liquid tank. You've got some burst pipes over here. Oh, we do. Uh, by the pressure, yeah, the pollutant burst. What? Oh, jeez. Oh, that, that's not good. All right, we we'll get some, find a pipe. Uh, there's too much pressure. That's the problem. Well, it's pollutants. Yeah, we're we're trying to. I wonder if we just have too much in there. Yeah, so pollutant oh, needs okay. to be kept below. Um, 3.6 megapascals to be comfortable at well, this temperature. Well, we've heated it, so it's at. Oh, yeah, it got a little warm for some reason. Yeah, as it loses and generates, as it changes between the phases, it will heat up. So it's, as you see, if if you come with the atmospheric analyzer now and and you monitor it, it will go up and it will go down because it's condensing then evaporating, condensing then so it's in a sort of equilibrium state. Yeah. Well, is what we do is we, when the gas has come in, we, I'm, I'm torn between what buttons I'm supposed to press for jetpack because I have two different games that do two different things. We keep it at a high pressure. Oh, we lost power here somewhere. No, I was about to say there's no power. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, dear. Right. Oh, dear. Unless we oh, yeah, I did. They added right. these really nice little goggles that allow you to see your power networks. Uh, and your pipe networks uh, when they're when they're inside walls. Really? That's a thing. Yeah, like the um, uh -oh. like the oh, the sun's coming up, so we should get power. Uh, huh. Like the mining glasses, kind of like that. Oh, oh, is that a thing in the game? I didn't think it was a thing. Yeah, it's on the on the newest patch. Did you hear that, Ben? There's new shades we can w wear. All right, so I'm trying to figure out where. These batteries are finally getting a charge. All right. Now, okay, so things powered up over here. I thought we blew a wire somewhere. No, I think that's just a uh, loss of power. After the phase change, the filters became nerfed, and we keep a high pressure so that the filters filter better. So we keep it up to yeah. 13 megapascals. Um. It's fine. But yeah, I can see the pollutants are, well, they're 54 degrees so Celsius, but there is some, all right, there is some liquid in there and it's increasing. Yeah, so the solution for this is either to vent it off completely um, until, so you put a back pressure regulator with a vent and just vent it into space and set right. that to 3,600 3, or have more tanks. Well, we do have a large tank downstairs. You've got nine kilomoles in that tank. And so if you add um, some extra tanks to this line, that will fix the problem for a little bit. Well, there's a, a very, very large tank downstairs. If you come downstairs where yep. you'll see we have the larger tanks. I'm trying to see if we have a burst pipe. 
We actually don't have a whole lot of X, but there is water in there. So that would be a purge valve to purge the water out of a gas line. Uh, you would need to vent the, 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 if you vent the pressure rather than the water, the, the liquid will turn back into, I can't find a way down half of it. Oh, go, go to the, uh, uh, go to the, uh, your working area. Remember the power wall? Oh, I'm down by the gas, is not it? Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not a capacity issue. Um. Oh, yeah, you've got 68 kilomoles in this large tank, so that's what's causing it. This tank is full. Really? Yeah, this big tank is full. Oh, 68.8 kilomoles. That's true. All right, you're right. So, all right. Back so, what I would say. Yeah. All right, I'm on it. Yeah, back pressure regulator and vent and set it to 3,600. And then I... you will vent off a lot of pollutant, but it's better than blowing pipes. That's fine. We don't even use it for any more, anything anymore. All right, Ben, I'm I'm messing with your stuff. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. No, no, he, he he's okay with it, and then he just puts Wait, his... He, he gets his clipboard out and starts doing all the check marks, and then he goes and fixes it. All right. Vent away. Let me... um. I got to go fix my tank. Yep. I'm going to find that tool thing and get a hard suit. Yes. Oh, geez. We got too much pollutants. I have a boatload of pressure regulators. I don't know oh, they gotta be over here. Yeah, pollutants and NOS are the... You need, you need to keep NOS at really low pressure or really hot. And pollutants are the same as well. But as soon as you increase the temperature, the pressure increases. So keeping them cold at a low pressure, you get more. Do you have any astrolite? Um, I have to check all the machines. I don't think we're gonna have a whole lot of that. Yeah, because we don't use the, I use the hard back suit, but not the, uh, I don't think either one of us got the big hard suit. What I'm looking for. Pipes. Well, the um, I'm still getting used to the phase change. I'll be honest with you, Dunn. Just when you think, yeah, just when you think you got it going, then you don't. Yeah, when you log in and your entire base is just exploding from the inside out.
So when you copper randomly on the floor. Oh yeah, I used yeah. <laughs> Does it? Oh, you're right. Uh, well, I was trying to actually relieve the pressure pressure versus the liquid pressure, but the liquid seems to be escaping anyways. Yeah, it it all will just fly out of that pipe. Once the pressure's equalized, um, if it increases again, it will just vent. We don't have any liquid except for it's, uh, well, it's almost gone. So what's interesting is I have a valve with a passive vent on a gas tank and the valve is open, but no gas is leaving. Oh. Well. Hmm. Well, okay, the numbers are going down just very slow because there's so much in there. All right, let me leave that on. Oh, I see it now. Okay, I was expecting so much pressure to get blown away. That didn't happen. There is no astroloy. Uh oh. Oh, we might have to make some. Um, for some reason, I'm getting a null wrap here. And a. Stall Weird. That again. Hey, good morning, Grumpy. How you doing? It's a back pressure regulator. There you go, that worked. Nope. That's not what I want. did find a wireless battery I could uh, acquire though. Game Circle, I've been looking for a group or a single person to play stationers with on a daily basis like you and Steve do every Sunday. You mean Ben? <laughs> 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 That's okay. Ben doesn't mean being called by other names because he doesn't want to be reminded of, uh, you know, our mistakes. Um, you know, the thing is, once they, once they, the developers, stabilize the, um, the dedicated server, I am going to be pleased as punch to be able to, to host one of those. But because they make so many changes that require so many, their QA process, in my opinion, leads a little bit to be desired, so. All right, I, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I know what I'm doing. So. Yeah, well, when they did this latest patch, the dedicated service just refused to work completely. Yeah. Yeah, pressure's coming down and the polluting is just in that initial tank, it's not. Uh, uh. I'm, I'm working on stuff here, so I'm... Who's Steve? <laughs> Evidently, Ben, you're Steve now, all right? You don't mind, do you?
You get all gussied huh. up yet? Uh, not quite. Yeah, I was just trying to stop your pollutant from exploding. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm having manipulation problems here. I'm getting a hand, hand, handle on it. Uh, I'm not picky. See, he doesn't mind. So, may need a never drain valve here or a large tank, a pipe tank. Well, uh, I just rehooked it to the big tank again. And I'm, so, I'm... there's an area where the heat exchange is happening, where you're balancing your temperatures, where the pollutant is being forced into um, a heat exchange. And it's spiking at five megapascals. It goes to a liquid tank. That's uh, that's fine. I'll let them sort out. All right. Yeah. What what did you say the back pressure regulator should be set to? Uh, three thousand six. Nope. Yeah, uh, three thousand six hundred. That should stop liquid forming in that large tank. Well, I'm gonna have to figure something else out here. I can't get a wire in there. Yeah, I don't understand why back pressure regulators need a wire. You don't have to have them with a wire in 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 reality, they would just work. Oh I agree. I agree. So if I put it up higher and get wire. Alright, so I'm just going to get a large oxygen tank, as I forgot to do. And then work on the fishbowl. It's still an amazing idea, though. Well, I, can't I mean... I can't believe, I can't if, believe it works. If, if real-world physics can sometimes be applied, then, you know, people are going to go, Oh, cool, I'm learning something new. But then when they don't do it right, or because they can't do it or whatever then you go oh, i don't think that's how it works and then you got to figure out how to make it work and then when you find out you have buggy game mechanics and you're going okay i don't get this yeah like the um those things you've been playing with on the single player yeah it would be amazing if those things worked as intended i need the sun to come up so i don't stop getting lost <laughs> yeah we should probably put directional arrows Oh, I found it. All right. Cool. I'm working in a confined space here. Can't maneuver. Oh, it's a blown wire here. Oh, gee. Uh, it's by the. It's by one of the printers. It's like right at the end. Probably why we lost power. We we have something that we can't trace that keeps blowing wires. I'm just gonna There we go, now I'm being blown around. Alright. We'll get rid of all the X here. I'm not actually using um, anything. Say so the printer's top side or blow side? As a blown wire. Top side. I've I've repaired the wire. It was the last one on the chain. Well it's, it was here. We'll turn off the solid generator. For some reason we're not getting any power top side. Nothing being transferred, so we have a blown wire somewhere. Let's see. It's downstairs. Probably what I should do is reset some stuff here so we get back to normal. So we have, yeah, so we have 75% power downstairs and only 25% power upstairs. So the transfer is wire blown somewhere. Let me go turn off drills. Uh, 
I have, I have an oxygen canister. The um, where the filter tanks are, upside. Yeah, there you go. You just you can swap out that, and then if you need to empty your CO2, you can swap it out right here. Oh, that's a uh, dump. Yep. Oop. Um. I will deal with a smaller backpack for now. So that's on. Well, there's Ben. Hey. Hi, Ben. Good morning. So we have an extra employee, and he walks into a disaster area. <laughs> Sounds like every job I've ever had. Here, I thought I was yeah, going to have an easy day of just recycling stuff, and that's not the case. The first thing I come across was a uh, burst pipe. For some reason. I like your heat exchange, Ben, that you've got going with the liquid. Ben, he's talking about your new setup. Yeah, to keep the... To reheat the uh, reserve of gas there to cool the generators, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my understanding of that radiator was that um, it collects heat, but it doesn't actually um... eat anything. If no, you, it, it literally just my understanding was that it, it it only collects heat. It doesn't actually dissipate any heat. Oh, oh, oh. It so... it does dissipate as long as it's not in direct line of sun. So you turn it, if you want to heat it up, you have it track the sun like a solar panel. If you want to cool things down, you do the opposite. So you have it face away. It's really bizarre. Yeah, I need to find a way to uh, probably apply the solution um, uh, you had there, the emptying that uh, system of all liquids at night. Yep. So I need to see. I make my fish tank out of the reinforced ones because I don't know. Yeah, if um, I think if it will blow. I think we have some extra stellite and reinforced downstairs. I did see some. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, there's only one. So I think I think if you use the auto laid downstairs should have stuff you need right, yeah, I'm trying to jump in here because it looks like uh, need all hands on board all right hang on doing <laughs> stuff ex stuff exploding <laughs> I'm just gonna sit back with my uh, gamer circle mug here in my hot cocoa and supervise okay oh I like that mug. good stuff all right Ben whenever you're ready never mind there you go <laughs> yeah the emptying of the radiator is something I did when phase change first started, because I used to have a, uh, like a series of air conditioners just cooling each areas of my base, and the air conditioning pipes kept blowing, so I just had radiators, and then they kept uh, freezing in the pipes. So I just ended up with these little, I had turbo pumps at first, but small pumps are enough to do it. Done if we put fuses, yeah, we could definitely find a blown fuse, but we could also use the network analyzer to find where a wire's busted too. There's all, that's what's cool about this game is there's so many different solutions for the different problems. So Crom says, hello, I'm watching from time to time. I love this game, but no time because of work. Is it possible to make a tour, update what you've done in this place? Love the stream, good show. Thanks, Crom. You want a tour? Um, how about we fix our problems and then I'll be more than happy to do a tour. I'm waiting for, Ben's got to get out of his chair. He's got to get his coffee. He'll be here in about 30 minutes. I'm kidding. Um, hey, uh, Kata, let me show you um, back here. Yeah, there you are. Um, yeah. Where I was attempting to do the two generator setup at the same time, uh, everything I disassembled are in these six lockers. So plenty of insulated. And here's, okay, some, yep. here's some Stellite. There's only three there, but there's some stuff there. So I'm just gonna get some steel frames. All right, cool. All right, where do you want to... Because so I'm gonna have to punch through the ceiling. 
Right, so you're gonna your your fish tank space is back here. Yep. So is there room for me to punch through the ceiling to get yep. the Yeah. Just uh and then if you're wireless, you should have enough coverage for all your yeah, wireless yeah. stuff. So, just so about here? Yeah, where wherever you want to set it up and punch through. There's uh no permits to be filed. Don't tell Ben I said that. <laughs> I have not seen the new telescope. From what I understand, it doesn't do anything yet. Yeah, I'm right. wondering what that's going to be for. So let me um, let me find Ben. Yeah, I am over by the transformers, uh, the solar panels. Okay. So are the are the batteries getting a charge? They're not getting a charge from the solar panels, are they? No, they're not. Did you disconnect the solar panel? Well, I usually disconnect right here, but it looks like. Line. So the power should be going in on this yellow line through the transformer, right? Uh -huh. Okay, the transformer's on. Well, the, the light is green. I mean, the switch is green, but I don't see any power coming through. Yeah, it's not full of power at all. So does that mean... Panels broke? The panels are generating 496 each. All right, so let me turn on the solid generator, see if that distributes any power. Okay, solid generator's on. This says that there's zero power coming. Oh wait, that doesn't go through there. Oh, it goes to the purple line. Purple to this transformer, all right. Okay, so this light's on. So the solid generator is giving some power. You see that in that? Do you have a uh, do you have a cable analyzer on you, Ben? Yeah. Can you put one on the line that's coming out of the solid somewhere? Ben just happens to be having the cable analyzer. Cable analyzer. Uh. Yeah, just... 8.3 megawatts. All right, so there is power coming from solid. It's almost like... The link is... Vulcan here somewhere. I'm going to take a... So you see, you see power come from the solid. You, you did confirm that. Yes. Okay. So I see this one battery blinking, like it's getting power, but it's not getting it from from the uh, solar panels. So the solar panels go through this heavy transformer here, right? This large transformer. Yeah. All right. Well, um, the battery is definitely charging here. All right. That's good news. Well, so where's the on and off switch for the big ones? Oh, here they are. Okay, we just had an update. So usually things that have updates. All right, so those are on. That battery's charging. So let me do something here real quick. So the solid generator's coming from that green, right? And then we're connecting it here. So I'm going to do this real quick. I'm going to take all these wires off. I'm just gonna redo them. See if see if there's a broken one that we can't see because of multiplayer sync or something like that. So if I bring this one down, oops. Okay, I got yellow for some reason. Hang on. Trying to keep his colors. Solar panels are registering right to the input of the transformer. All right. So for some reason, this other battery's not charging. Well, they'll charge in sequence. That's just the way they work. Okay, so let me let me try this then. But this transformer should be outputting power. Right. I'm trying to see if we have a battery problem also. So 
I've disabled the... Oh, that doesn't help. I gotta go... Hang on. Oh, that's right, because they're, like, first in, first out or something like that for charging. Yeah. Oh, I got you. I'm just trying to solve the mystery one one component at a time here. I can get this to work. Don't go that way. Yeah, that was the next thing I was going to do. I'm just trying to get power right to this other battery to see if it is the battery. No, the batteries are charging. All right, so if I then... All right. So the solid generator is working, that transformer is working, and all four of these batteries are now blinking, so they're getting power from the solid. Connected to the transformer from the solar panels. And now I see 49.6 kilowatts coming through that cable analog. Uh, it, for some reason, the wires had to be disassembled and reassembled. And we can that uh, cable back here. Oh, uh, which one did I do? Did I break one? Oh, I yeah, see it. Right, got it, got it, got it. All right. So it's odd that the the large transformer coming from the um, solid generator, the light stays on, but this. Oh, okay. Is this one blinking because it's just transferring power, or is that a Glitchy thing. I don't know anymore. <laughs> that is so weird. It is very weird. All right, so it looks like solar is now doing what it needs to do. It looked about right, Ben. We should be transferring power below, which I'll check out here. I got it. I'll go down. Oh, I'm running into dirt stuff. I got it. Don't worry. I'm fine. Katie, you're running out, running around without a helmet on. Am I? That's what. That's probably a multiplayer <laughs> thing. I'm pretty uh, sure I'd be dead. I see. I see the transformer on, oh, yeah. but the switch is flipped, but it's not illuminated. Ah, oh, so we have another break somewhere. Dandy. Yeah, I know. I'm a, I'm a bit I'm a bit worried now. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's you're you're mutated. You've mutated for the moon. You don't need the the helmet. That's awesome. So, so we have thirty percent power topside because solar panels and the solid generator, but we're not getting train oh, now is the light on? No, that's not illuminated on. You should get a game a circle mug uh, modded in the game. That would be cool. Get some. I don't have any heavy cable. Do we have any heavy cable? Two. Awesome. Can you tell on the wire if anything's broken? So he's a robot too. He could be a, a T1000. You're right. All right. I got some. You're okay there, Caden? You find everything you need to find to build your fish tank back there? Yeah, I've just made some interior pipes. Okay. Um, once I've got the structure and I'll be able to start filling it up and then heating it up is going to be the next step. All right. Because it's heated to 40. I'm going to snip some wires and then replace them and see if that fixes things. All right. I can even manage that. That. All 
Now again, what is the yellow cable is the output from the batteries. Yellow is power outgoing. Um, that's the power that feeds the batteries. Um, wait, sorry. <laughs> well, so we use green when we're coming from power generation down here. Uh, so I've got so many that yellow cable is just extended everywhere just to collect data. Okay. Hey, look at there. Now we got a blinking power light, which I've never seen before. That's that's progress. Thank you. So somehow wires just stopped working. I uh, think you powered the input and output power together. Did I do? Did, did oh, you mean you crossed some wires here? All right. Oh, I did. Hang on. Me. Uh, that's why that wire went that way. Okay. And that's a blue. Hang on. Go. Go. I'm on it. I will become an electrician, electrical wizard in this game by today. That's my goal today. Okay. Now, now we got the same problem. see what actually registers on the network analyzer here all right the batteries register here okay um, now downstairs we have power because it's coming from the generators top side has power because it's coming from the solid and the solar panel there is no power flowing here okay what's the what's the transfer board say over there oh i flew upstairs real quick zero one or two oh, hang on fine. i flew top side It's in a state one, but it's not transferring power. So it's doing what it should be doing, but it's not. And that should be going via the blue line, though? Yeah. All right. You know, it's weird because last time we had... Did you find something? Last time we had this, it was weird that there was a blown wire, but we couldn't visually see it. But everything is on, except for I can't see what's going on. Oh, All right, so. So what do we have here, we have a reader and a reader. So you're reading some stuff for data and there is no power being transferred. I'm going to, I don't see any blown wires. I just don't see any of these lights on. And these lights would only flip if we're going from top side to bottom side, right? Yeah, they should be transferring now. Yeah. Place that four way. All right, so I'm going to go through the tedious process of just replacing these wires. So we know these are fresh. A logic chip that's out of sorts here. Probably because I just disabled these wires. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Hang on, bear with me. Do any of these, so as long as the transformers are registering what they're supposed to be doing, it should be doing what, it's not a logic issue, it just for some reason, a wire is not working somewhere, right? I don't know, it seems to be some kind of a mix of, um, the wires look like they're connected. Um, I can see the network through my tablet, 
but it's just not transferring any power for some reason. Okay. I wonder if they introduced a potential problem. Maybe they've been trying to fix the transformer infinite power glitch. Alright, so still nothing. Alright. So I'm just gonna go through the tedious process of replacing the entire blue line. See if it's along there somewhere. Did you see a despair gas fuel generator you see? Or do I need to make one? Um check. Oh, you might have to make one. I think all the spares are being used. Well, we should have a spare in maybe one of the lockers by... Um, I think by because we're setting up number four, remember? We're going to try the different one, so I think that's the one that we're using. Oh, right, right. All right, so those... Now, how would I know if this is working? Um, if I... Am I going to see either... No, only if power is going from... Downstairs, while I see these flips, right? These switches flip. Yep. What do you think the problem is then, Dunn? How are these chips getting their power from the green line, which comes from these batteries? Okay. Uh, Ben's been looking at the power analyzer. He can see things connected, but he didn't see any power coming across. And. What I did to fix the batteries is I just deconstructed the wires and put them back on. See, this transformer should be on, but it's not. It's connected between red and green. What? It's connected between red and green, I think. Well, the red heavy comes from that's our output this red right here comes into a yellow and goes there and then goes oh wait hey ben i have yeah. a question up here um this red is connected to that cable line analyzer is that connecting to the green as well nope just okay. a cable analyzer all right Gotcha. Yeah, no, it's that's what I was confirming. So this is just so we can see how much power is going out and in, I guess. Yeah, yeah it's just a data, data transfer point. All right. Now these chips get the power from the big batteries and the APC here, right? Yeah. Okay, got that. Over here, this um, these two logic readers are reading solar state okay and this one's reading solid okay so that's just your data that you're getting from the, from the panel you deconstructed the battery connections and replaced them yeah that's what i was telling Dunn. i just I, I disassembled the wires to the batteries to make sure that so if i turn on the solid generator yeah see so that was not working before i did that to the wires so whether whether it's a state thing with the game or something, that's what I'm in the process of doing. Yeah. Right, so I was down here. Because sometimes in a multiplayer game, even the host Will not see things. Dollar oh, refs. Really? I'm not getting in. Yeah, I just placed a gas fuel generator and got a load of. Oh. That Hopefully, you guys can see it. No. We. I saw that last time when I did it. I don't know why putting it down. The generator does a null ref. Is it possible you just have to replace the connections at the battery downstairs? Um possible i'm going to connect them reconnect them all just in case there's a blown wire that we that we don't see that way we can make sure 
You may have to tell me your color coding later on, because I'm just placing stuff down normally right. for now. Yep. Oh, ben, Ben's got it locked in his his, his head. Uh, I still have a logic reader up here that's breaking out. Now I'm 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 breaking down the blue wire and reconstructing it. So let me recomplete it again and see if that fixes oh, your problem. That's why. Okay. The patch before this latest one, I got tons of null refs and tons of different parts. I, I had the same problem last time we played when I put down the latest gas generator. Right when I placed it, I saw null refs. I don't think the problem is the blue line. Okay. I remember we had a four-way intersection that we couldn't tell was was blown. I couldn't see it, you couldn't see it, and then we just replaced it and that magically fixed that problem. That blue line is reconstructed. Is your logic reader working? Uh, yeah, looks good. Okay, so that's what's causing that. So we only got 24% power downstairs. Generators are not running. We got fuel. Oh, I got too cold. Got way too cold. me to reconstruct and deconstruct them? Uh, come take a look. Alright. Our generator stopped working downstairs. So the top side batteries? Yep. Right, what am I looking at? See the power button on them? Oh, yeah. It's green, but it's not lit. Yeah. All right. So that one's not getting a charge. It should be. All right. You might want to check the line that's connected to. Yeah, I, I yeah, read. And see, the problem is they weren't getting any power. So we thought there was a blown wire with the solar panels. Check that. I turned on the solid generator. They still weren't getting a charge. So I deconstructed and reconstructed the lines in. And that fixed it. So this one battery was getting a charge, but now it's not. No, oh, the battery to the, the, the battery to my tablet died. Hopefully. Yeah. So, let's see what happens. Uh, I think behind you there, over here, there's some batteries. There's what? Where did uh, I go? Angles. I fell down a hole. Come back up here. Oh, there you go. There's some batteries over here. Oh, where are you? <laughs> I've lost. I've lost you. Oh, I see. You. Oh, there you go. Batteries. Oh. It's hard to uh, tell you two apart. You're both in white suits. Oh yeah, thank you. I think I have a yellow backpack, and he's got a white one. Would not let me place the battery until. Well, the, the power buttons for batteries don't glow anymore. Did. That's what I'm noticing too. Or did they ever glow? We're just assuming they did. <laughs> well, the big Transformers was doing that as well. Quite sure why, though. 
See, I didn't notice this when I was trying to do something similar to your power transfer. When I was putting a transformer in front of the solar panels, it would flick on and off rather than All right, let's, have a constant feed. Let's try some here. Kata, do me a favor. Go to Greenhouse 2. Go sit in Ben's chair. Let's have you disconnect and see if we're just having a multiplayer sync issue. Okay. Uh, what's, well, it's behind the filtered tanks? Oh, yep. I think I remember. Yes, I see. I, I see the glowing signal of Ben guiding my way. Bing bonga, Reavers calling. No, oh, no, no Reavers in this game. How you doing there, Red? A transformer is lighting up now. The uh, the transformers of the power line. Oh really? Okay. Okay, I'm in the chair. Do All I right. disconnect? Yeah, just go ahead and disconnect. Uh, uh, I am out. All right, let's see if, because we ran into this problem a long time ago. So, okay, that battery's still not charging. Okay, and you said the transformer that's supposed to be powering. Oh yeah, look at that. Is it working? Well, the battery that's supposed to be getting a charge is not getting a charge. Well, remember, it's still going to go by build order because there is actually power coming through here from okay. the solar panels. Um, I just don't know which one to start. All right, let's do this then. Let's. Uh, I'm going to turn them all off except for the one that we want to test. Oh, okay. It works. Well, let me check if it works here. Oh, oh, I've okay. got the... Uh, Uh, device configuration tablet here. Uh, yes, the one with the blinking red light, that, that one is actually charging. Uh, All right, so that's the one I reconstructed. Now. All right, so I'm going to turn on the one top side, above it. Is that one charging as well? Uh, yes. Top one is charging now, yeah. Well, I'm, the visual might be a false. I have to get some more jetpack fuel before I crash your brain. Just let me know it's safe to come back in. Um, hang on one sec. So, Ben, let me ask you, the large transformer to your right, the lights blinking on and off, is that a transfer state or just a graphical glitch? Uh, I believe it's a graphical glitch at this point. Uh, okay. But it is it does appear to be transferring power. Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna turn on Alright, why are we not oh. So with all the solar panels we're not, not getting enough power to keep Oh I know what's going on. There's no power downstairs, so it's trying to transfer all the power downstairs. And there's nothing downstairs. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um... The solar panels will generate 26.9 kilowatts. Right. Uh, 20 of which is going to go is going to get shunted downstairs. All right. So just turn on the solid to help. Uh, Kate, I think you can probably come in, yeah. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Remember to leave the chair like you found it. Otherwise, Ben gets very upset. I feel privileged to sit in Ben's chair. He's the only one that's ever sat in that chair before. Oh, that's uh, that's worrying. A connection could not be established. You might have to quit all the way out of the Stationer's game and then relaunch it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just do that. I mean, one day it will work as intended. Ben, how do we temporarily stop the transfer going downstairs cut the, cut the wire probably um yeah I mean, if you snip the blue line there's no transfer that's gonna happen so right. that'd be the quickest easiest way all right so i'm gonna clip the line right here all right so i've got the base of the fishbowl so I don't know, I've just got to 
put some logic switches in to turn the vents on okay. and then transfer that liquid and heat it. Oh, and cut a hole in the floor for the um, cooling. Well, a hole in the ceiling. Right, I'm going to let the solar panels charge. I'm going to see if it's solid. Yeah, Ben did look at the cables. Join. Yeah, go ahead. Ben looked at the cables and he saw devices, but no power. So I don't know if it's a multiplayer because we're doing not a server, but a peer to peer. So I don't know if uh, information is not getting through. Yeah, I just keep getting connection could not be established. Oh, that's weird. Um, connection could not be established. Check the address. Hang on one sec. What, Ben? You want to do a save and reload? Yeah, I can do that. So before I do that, um, did you want to verify? Turn on the other two batteries. Can you use your device tablet to see if they're actually getting a charge? Um. This one's actually losing a charge. I'm guessing it's getting its power transferred out. Well, the top uh, side's uh, using power, yeah. The second one is charging. The third one is charging. If my memory serves, the, the one with one the... Is charging. Yeah, the, the, the far left one, as you're looking at, that was the first battery I put in place after I got rid of the small ones. Yeah, it's still losing a charge. Alright, well, I guess it's being used. Hang on, let me fire this up. Fire this up. Is it getting a charge now? Yeah, it's just about to die. And it's dead. Oh, okay. Huh. What the power drain is. The drills are off. No, it's charging again now. Oh, okay. no, it's gone. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, there's definitely something odd with the uh, electrical network. Alright, so let me see. You got your device tablet, right? Yep. Let me see what you're looking at. That way when I, I don't want to evidently I'm tracking Ben. Right, device, you're looking at the battery and power you're actual charge. Oh, so charge is zero. Yes. This one says charge. Oh, I see there's a number there. Okay, I got it. Yeah. All right. And it's increasing a little bit. That's the important part. Oh, oh I see oh, it. Oh, look at that. Picking it up. Yeah. And it's thinking, oh, no, it's coming back up. The only power generation. Now, once again, if I stamp the blue line, nothing could be coming from downstairs, right? No, but the red line still powers everything topside. Right. I'm just thinking there's nothing up here that would cycle to take power except for the filters, I guess. Now, if the gas generators aren't running, that means there's no exhaust, but I'm wondering if... Um, okay, the centrifuge is on, so let me, um, let me power that down. That centrifuge is off. So everything else should be just a constant draw because nothing, unless the filters. It says we're According to the power board, we're getting power from solar, but I think it's confused because I cut the wire. 
we'll keep Kata company here while uh, you and Steven are inland. Alright. Alright, so... Do this. And we'll do this. That. Do... So... We're on 51 or 52. 51. Alright. Exiting and I'm up. Okay. Okay, game save. That's done. Let me go ahead and exit. Relaunching. Had a hot cook. I'm out of tea. See, with uh, you guys two connected, OBS isn't reporting any drop frames, so we didn't have any connectivity issues on on my internet. And I do remember, and this was back before they changed the netcode a couple times, that we would have sync issues, but usually the host wouldn't have a sync issue. Usually. Yeah, we'll just blame it on updates. Yeah. Loading the save. And then before I get you guys to join in, um, I'm gonna check the um, battery charge state, see if they're getting charged. And um, then I'm gonna turn off the solid and see if they start discharging. Just to see if we get some basic. Now, if he could verify that the whole power transfer thing is working, that'd be awesome. All right, so. So the, there is a power, so I, I can't use the power board for accurate information because the blue lines carries all the information. Um, I haven't verified it. I'm not sure which part's working correctly. Okay. Well, it says our total generation is zero. So since I cut the blue line, that's where the uh, solid and the solar information would come from. So that makes sense. Right. right right now it says we're doing I'm gonna say 11 kilowatts total power but I know we're not so the solid doesn't generate what it generates 20 though. yeah 20 so that should be enough to keep everything going plus charge a battery that battery's charging that battery's charging. That battery's charging. You're CNC. You're okay. That battery is charging. All right, so let's do this one um, by one. Let's have Ben hop in. What's your power actual uh, on that reading? Because well, that's a lot. Well, it's you go big... back to the battery. So oh. I've got a bit of delay because of the stream. Okay. It power actual is. So it's drawing 10,000, but you're receiving 20,000. Yeah. Yeah. So there's 10,000 going out, but there's 20,000 coming in, so they should be all charging. Yeah. All right, Ben, go ahead and hop in. Let's do this one by one. It's a very helpful chip. Never. Right. Uh, I'm relaunching the game on my side here just to make sure. Yeah. I can't say I've ever used that chip, but yeah, that's useful.
I'm gonna try to join again here. Okay. So before Kata joins, um, so again, the blue line is still cut. Top side is being batteries are, and everything's being run off of solid. So give us a few minutes. Ben, let's go run downstairs and see if we can get the generators running. Downstairs. No worries. For some reason, they stopped running because the, the gas got too cold, cooling gas. Oh, we're gonna need some power down here. Um, okay, I have a plan. Ben's not gonna like it, but I have a plan. Okay, let's hear it. In situations like this, we had a solid generator downstairs that we could feed some stuff into, we could get some power. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. I, see, and then I don't know how to interpret that. Yeah, that's an idea, I don't know if I like it though. You know, extreme uh, circumstances calls for extreme measures, right? I, I agree. So generator that in the electronic printer? Uh, I think it is. That doesn't make any sense. Solid. Okay. Because we don't have any battery no big battery downstairs so if we lose power generation we don't have any, any way to keep the lights on except for the circuitry your logic has got an apc Ben, do you know if in the lockers downstairs, do we have a solid battery or a stationary battery downstairs? Uh, checking. Right. Cause I'm thinking if the solid generator can keep a battery charged then that can go to the green line from the um, generators. That way, if we lose There's power- a battery kit. So yeah, yes. There's something called a battery kit here. Yeah, that should be it. All right. Let's see here. So all of our gas generators output goes to the green line, right? Yep. All right. So if we put this over um, here, Take the output tied into the green line. But no, I'm gonna put a battery between it. So put that battery somewhere, Ben. Wherever you want to put it. All right. They had it. Uh, after Rocket, um, after Rocket confirmed that the way power is currently requested, having batteries in parallel can cause burned cables. When it shouldn't usually one battery responds to a request i don't think i got mine set in parallel okay and the output is on this side that's the input okay all right so the output of the battery will go to the back side and then you'll do a pop over to connect the green line 
Unless you want to flip the battery around. Uh, I can do it. I don't care. Okay. Someone. Bad about right. Let me grab some coal. Just something I don't think we have down here. Alright, kid, we'll get you to join as soon as we get um I want Ben to verify that we're actually transferring power. I just passed Ben on the stairs. Now that solar's out, I'm going to turn off the solid up here. And okay, the battery's been struck to it. Got some coal. Let's go ahead and turn that battery on. Battery on. Battery on. Okay. All right. Let's get in a charge. So, is there any problem with? Did you want to put a transformer? Between this battery and the green line before I just dump it straight in there. Nah, go for it. Right. Is everything's gonna ask for a bunch of power at once? I wonder if that's gonna blow a line somewhere. Power low. Uh, no, the green line feeds the batteries and it's uh, power limited to 50 kilowatts. Gotcha, all right. So then, that should be setting power to... Hey, the batteries are blinking. All right. That's a good backup plan. All right. So I'm going to leave some coal here, just in case. Well, there was... Oh, I guess those batteries suck this battery dry. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I, I get it. Oh, where'd it go? Go. And uh, series can also burn out wires. See, that's usually what I run into because I usually put mine in series. All right, hang on, Caden. Now that we got power down here, um, I'm gonna try to get this generator to run. That's what you were working on, trying to heat those, uh, heat the gas, right? Yep. Okay. All right. So instead of that, because um, that's something I can fill with later, 
Does everything look like so we have 11% power downstairs now? So all we need, all I need to do is connect that blue wire, and we should get a power transfer from top side to bottom, right? Nice. All right. And did you? Um, so I'm upside. I'm top side, about to connect it. Did you want to check the power state to make sure it is actually in the process of doing that? Yeah, let me get in position here. All right. Hey, okay, go for it. Look at that. All right, so for your information, the large transformer coming from the solar panels is a solid green light, so there's power constantly coming through. I do see the transformer on to UG underground. All right, so that's on. Notable, thank you so much for the 74 months digging up the floors. I did a little bit, and I'm now putting the wire on. Now the green light lit up here on the medium transformer. Yeah, that's good. All right. So that's so weird. Hey, Prime. Well, yeah, and you're almost fully charged up there and uh, we're yeah. at 16%. So yeah, it's gonna transfer power down here. All right, so hang on one sec, Kato. Let's see if, um, so that should go all the way until there's a 10% difference, right? And then it'll stop the transfer? Correct. Okay. Now, I didn't double check, so we shouldn't have any blinking logic chips, right? No chips should be blinking. Everything should be green, yeah. All right, so let me just verify. I didn't misconfigure a wire. Oh, it looks like... All right, looks good. Good. Solar panels are tracking. Still transferring power downstairs. Batteries are all blue. This solid transformer up here is off. We probably can turn off the solid generator downstairs. I got it. All right. Um, if you have batteries in series, you can always add new batteries to the back of them to prevent this. That's true. Or you can add a transformer. Right out of coal. So what, I, what we're waiting for is this little tiny LED is our top side battery state of charge. So it's at 97%. Ben's logic here, number two means it's transferring, uh, transferring to underground. So that means top side is sending power bottom side to bring it up to a 10% difference between, so right now we're at 25% downstairs, 26 actually, rounding up. So we're gonna sit here and wait and make sure that works. And then the power straight should settle down and then we'll get Cade on back in here and then see if, uh oh, why did this blow out? Well, did the automatic system trip it on or something? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't even be- uh, Yeah, we're not even using anybody. it, yeah. That's weird. I think we have a ghost. <laughs> That's okay, because we're going to disassemble this anyways. It's a lot of pressure to blow that out. It, it is. Um, the thing is that nothing logic-wise was on. There was still gas in the room, but there was no rate. Uh, the generator sh Oh. Hey, Ben. The logic is still yeah. working for this generator. I bet, I bet it tried to turn on. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I can't do it now. All the logic is broke. Just, just probably, probably continue the cable to the generator. All right. Probably continue to try and heat it until the gas in the room expanded too much. Probably. All right. Can we make those big nuclear batteries or does that take? 
Takes Astral and Int to Soul, so no. All right, so I think actually this all looks like it's working, right? Looks good to me. Okay. All right, so let me do a, an F5 here. And then um, fly up here. Ada, go ahead and uh, try to connect if you want. I shall give it a go now. Now you got a helmet on. That worked this time. All right. So to fix our connectivity problem, I had to reset it. So evidently, I still thought that um, it was still connected. And that's happened with Ben before, too. It's my ghost. Could be. Oh, I like your power chair. <laughs> <laughs> I've, never, I've never seen one before. There you go. Q. It's funny. You've you've got a big helmet, but everything else is small. That makes you unique. Well, so you can tell the difference. Yeah. All right. Huh, there's debris all over the place here. I'll get it. Something to... I don't know how that blew unless the logic was trying to force it to run. But we're, we were going to, as oh, long as... Our, we've got liquid, uh, I'm sorry, pure ice liquid nitrous. <laughs> Ooh, that was, uh, yeah. Right. That, that's a pipe going somewhere with the pipes frozen. Can oh. I actually put that in the ice crusher? Yes. Yeah. we we got to wait until... Uh, um, I, I spent like almost two hours collecting ice and oh, crushing... Oh, there's a gas leak behind the uh, ice crusher. Oh, I burst in my pile. Oh, that's because I tried to force it into. All right. I'll let. Let me turn off the ice crusher. I'll let, I'll let Kata fix it. I can turn it off. Can't I can start a pipe here. All right. Yeah, I. I left it not thinking. Doom, dom, dom, under pressure. Oh, my be <laughs> your wonderful singing voice. There's <laughs> nothing going about oh. venting there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So there should be plenty of ice here, and I think this backpack has... Thanks, Red. Oh, no, that one's empty. All right, so all the backpacks are empty. All the ice yeah, is uh, queued. And uh, so when you start emptying these small ones into yours, you can just recycle them and fill them. Yeah, I'll do that. All right. All right. I'm just uh, got myself turned around. I know. Everything's like... <laughs> It's like a maze within a maze within a maze. All right, so power's working again. For all those wanting to know, um, let me um, let me just click some debris here, and then uh, there's people that wanted a tour. I'll be more than happy to do that. I may have to pick up my coffee cups all over the place. Did they blow off the equipment? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Okay. It, it only blew out the side walls. The, well, the side and the front. Weird. All right. And this stuff can be cycled. I'm just going to throw it here. All right. So let me give a quick and dirty tour. Let me just verify one more thing. I still should be venting X. So Ben, do you mind checking the X to make sure I didn't botch anything over here? All I'm doing is, uh, I'm, I was getting rid of all the X because we don't use it for anything. Some liquid pollutant here. Unless a line blew again. Yeah, okay, so I, I did a good thing. Some it, it's it's nitrogen in the water. All right. So there's 16.7 moles of X. So I did a good thing. Finally worked. All right. It wasn't yeah. working, but it it's weird. I think it got rid of the liquid first, and then I wasn't seeing atmosphere coming out of the passive vent down there. So I thought, oh, this ain't working for some reason. Then it did. All right. Yeah, yeah the motion objection here is that this is really not really a serviceable area. Oh, I know. I know. 
I actually think I wanted to put the bash since all these large tanks are connected to the small tanks, I was gonna put the pressure regulators top side. Set them all the or same. Least, you know, something that we can link from uh, the the walkway we have up here. Uh, but the vents though should be going outside. Not that this is actually indoors or anything, but... <laughs> Yeah, this is this is underground outside. Um the my initially I think the idea was to put all those pressure regulators right where this, the original tanks are. So when there's since they're they're all connected up here, right? Every single one of those tanks have has a sister tank downstairs. Yep. So if I'm um I have a an episode here. So each time I see a color-coded pipe going down from a, a valve, that's connected down there somewhere, or is there another way that these are connected? So I guess my direct question is, right in front of these tanks, if I set a T-junction with a back pressure regulator and a passive vent sent to a certain amount, that should even things out, right? Uh, what now? Where I'm, where I'm hovering, so I'm up here where the filters are. Yeah. If uh, if I take out the section that connects right to the tank and put a T junction, and then put a back pressure regulator with a passive vent and set the back pressure regulator, that would solve the problems if we get too much gas, right? But you said they're connected topside, right? Yeah. Which I, I don't see. I see the pipes going down to the heat exchanges. Do they come off the heat exchange and then connect to the, the big, big tanks? Let me take a look. All right. Oh, yeah, that's the, all the big tanks are connected straight into the heat exchanger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if the beginning of the filtering starts up here, if if we put the back pressure regulators up here, is it a disconnect because they're going through the heat exchange? Huh. Um, well, this is the part that's a bit of a mystery in the game. Okay. We actually have a circulating pump that's trying to force a recirculation. Right. Through the heat exchanger. Um, the problem is, uh, so I get, let's know that there's an actual pressure drop, or if that pump is actually doing anything. Oh, I got you. So I th I think that is since the filtering starts with top side, this is overflow, but they're all connected. They're all connected through this. All right. So now I'm confused. So how does the excess CO2? And all the other ones bleed down to the big tanks. And it, it, um, the pressure equalizes through the heat exchanger. Uh, okay, wait a minute. How? Presumably. All right. all right. So, so it comes down here, but it's going against the flow, though. So, I'm, am I interpreting that incorrectly? If I look at the CO2. No, that's all right. So the CO2 filtering is up here. Top. T take your tablet. All right, hang on. And Tell me to take my tablet. You take your tablet. All right. <laughs> All right. So and, I'm looking uh, at it. You're reading uh, at the output of the pump, so above the pump. All right. What uh, pressure do you get? All right. So if I'm above the pump, like pointing up towards the filters, I see 6.1 megapascals. Uh, right. Because I studied you. And then below it, I see 5.42. So, okay, so there is a pressure difference. Okay, good. All right. So what the pump does is it forces a recirculation uh, through the uh, the heat exchanger. Okay. The heat exchanger is causing a pressure drop. Uh, okay. But ultimately, the top side and bottom side are connected through the heat exchanger. All right. All right. So to prevent any sort of blowouts, if we put the back pressure regulators 
hop side, so they don't exceed a certain amount, the source comes from what's ever producing the gas. So we don't want to put it down here because we're going to have it after the fact. So we very well could fill up topside before it even gets in, down top or down below because of the pressure difference. Uh, yeah, whichever side is the higher pressure, which I believe is the top side, is where you want the blow. Okay, to all right, that's a more logical. I, I was just thinking that we should adjust the or uh, vent based upon where it starts versus where it's stored. Hydration critical. Yeah, I still wanted to try those. Um, the smaller heat exchanger. Now I'm wondering if we should try the uh, crossflow heat exchanger on this thing. I don't know. The counterflow ones are... Problematic, right? Yeah, you have to sort of... The pressure inputs have to be this sort of same, but they're really good for um, making air conditioners, apparently. Alright, so I am going to give a tour because there's some some people wanted to know, and then I'm going to um, put pressure regulators on all the gases, and then Kate is, Kate is working on a fish tank, so a water cooled gas generator. And then Ben, you were trying to get the large. Uh, yeah, I'll see if I can stabilize the cooling system. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I need I need some grub. All right. All right, sweet. So, um, make sure everything's good. Everything's good. All right, so, um, so this is, this is the whole area over here. I call this site A, okay? So the respawn point obviously is where the lander is. And so this is our initial tool platform with our initial greenhouse. The greenhouse still is functional. It's safe and everything, but we're not growing food in here or anything like that. Now, it used to be the only place where we crushed to get water, but then I added something downstairs. So up here is where the solar panels are and the solid generator, which actually has solid fuel, which I made way over there. And uh, it gives the same, the solid generator doesn't, give any more power because of the different fuel type it just burns longer instead of having a chunk of coal in there bill it's like i think we timed it so it's twice as long um oh linky linky sun so we we have two different power sources we have underground and topside and we have it set up to where during the day we collect power from the sun and it charges this battery system and powers the base. Now, if it gets to where before under between underground and topside, if there's a 10% power difference, we transfer depending upon wherever the difference is. So right now we don't have a whole lot of power topside again, for some reason, probably because we transferred it all downstairs. Are those solar panels from the old design? I thought solar panels were red. Well, they used to be square. No, we, I don't know. Did they, did they change the solar panels again? Because if they change them, are you talking about the, because these aren't the, the heavy ones. Since we don't have a storm, we don't have the heavy ones. I think you're talking about the dual heavy. Wait, I'm in the wrong, wrong machine. So panel. So there's a heavy panel and this one might be red. It's been a while. Let's take a gander and see if it shows a picture. Heavy panel. Now it looks like they're the same color. Oh. So anyways, we're, we are generating power and it's getting stored. And if we look here, so we can see that there is a transfer going. This is probably coming. It says transfer to underground. So that means we probably 
are low on power downstairs. This is all the logic that transfers and monitors power. And then everything is, this blue line carries all the information, all the power from top side to underground. Hang on, I'm, I'm running downstairs to check our battery state. Okay, I'm gonna, th I'm gonna fire up the solid down here again. This battery's drained. Um, finish top side. So anything that generates an output, like um, the furnaces, the combustion powered centrifuge, anything that requires refiltering comes through the, the brown line, the, what we call the poopy line, the waste line. So all the brown lines are connected to the filtering system. And there's a little bit of logic set up for staging. So we don't push too much to it, probably unnecessary. So it's not really a cooling array. It's just kind of a, <clears throat> we hold gas in here into a certain point and then we filter it. Um, and then this um, parallel connection, I think we maintain Supposed to maintain 13 or 13 megapascals somewhere. Uh, should be some logic here. Somewhere. Zero. Yeah, 13 megapascals. Ben, if we don't have 13 megapascals in our filtering, where is that problem going to be at? Um. 13.5 is the minimum pressure to turn on the filters. Okay, the filters are on, but according to this, there's only 18.7 kilopascals. So, so I have to cycle the logic there. Okay. All right. So let me, that should be this right here. All right. So let me turn this off. Turn that off. So if the condition is true, so I, I state a zero is right. Okay, then we'll see if that works. So we have a higher pressure on the connection, so it forces the filters. Yeah, the, the basic solar panels are red. Those you can't track anything with. We've moved beyond the basic solar panels. Um, hang on a sec. So all the, all the filters are still on. Yeah, I'm trying to solve something here. So this is state zero. Batch writer should turn on. What's that going to turn on? Batch writer. Fill, oh, it should turn on the Filter. Okay, I should turn those guys on. So if I flip this, oh, they're still on. Hang on. Turn everything off. Off. This is. I'm having some sink issues. Can't seem to drain the tanks correctly. Be right there. One of them had CO2 in it as well. I can figure out why. CO2 and what now? In a water tank, it was just randomly in there. Uh, yeah, we found out that uh, when you first build that portable tank, uh, instead of leaving it completely empty, it adds a small dose of CO2 in it. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I thought so too. Also, a uh, fight with server lag to connect images. <laughs> <laughs> Ben, you got a minute? Yeah, what you got? Up to the filtering.
So I turned everything off because the states didn't make any sense to me. So this pipe analyzer is called gas staging. This logic is tied to it and we're comparing pressure. So is this pipe analyzer that tells this turbo pump to turn on? Is this set to zero? Oh, there's the logic writer. Oh. Gas pump input side. Okay, so this does that. All right, so if it is greater than zero, uh, right now there's only 116 kilopascals in our pooping line. That means it's greater than zero. So that means it should turn on a turbo. Pump. Right now it's on. Okay. And then when the pressure on the output side reaches 13.5, it should turn on the filters. All right. So is the so pressure the building? Okay. The pressure is building. Before the pressure wasn't building because the filters were on. Nothing was telling him to turn off. Uh, so what is now, this? Do you remember which logic you turned off here? I turned well. It, these these two sets here. So this set and this set I turned off. This one was already off. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and turn it back on here before we uh, overpressurize the input pipe. Go ahead. Yeah, it's it's at one point nine megapascals right now. What radiator is not connected? That one? Yeah, that's on purpose. Uh, are you sure this one was on? No, I don't. <laughs> All right, turn that one off. I'm sorry. All right, this one's looking at filter pressure check, which is this filter pressure check. Right here. So it's looking at this pipe analyzer. And it's look and this one's gonna look for 13 megapascals, right? Yeah, okay. The condition should be zero. So what does it turn? Oh, it turns on the filters, right? Right. All right. So the filters because are currently the filters run at a better efficiency when the input pressure is very high. Okay, right, right. Now, what is this turbo pump for right here? Got the output uh, size. That one will um, grab the um, waste line of all the filtration units and pump it back into the input line. So it looks for a greater condition of zero. So that is not on. All right. So the conditions are we have all zero, except for this one has a state of one on this logic writer. So it should be on, right? Looking at the pipe analyzer here, it registers a 22 kPa pressure uh, on the waste line. All right, so this logic reader units. is looking this at- turbo pump should have turned on. So the pipe analyzer filtering waste common. Is that what that one is? Yeah. All right, so I guess turn it on. Maybe I turned it off. It's on. I don't see it on. The pipe no, analyzer. No, no, the turbo pump. Oh, the pump. Oh. Yeah. So this turns on. Oh, I get you. Okay. All right. All right. So that should pump down the line here, which it's still doing. All right. So we only have. All right. So pressure's building again. All right. So this only turns off when the pressure's at 13, right? We have condensation yeah. in the line. Yeah. That pump only turns off when there's nothing in the input. Okay. It's based on the other pipe analyzer further down the line. All right, we have stress building in the uh, filtering line. So that means that this down here, this, ev this evaporation process isn't working. All 
All right, or it's now it's going down. Right, it went up and then it went down. All right, now it's going down. No, I didn't adjust uh, anything. It's less than one. It's less than one percent stress. It's not a big deal. Okay. All right. Well, I just it was going up when I was looking over when I was when I hovered my hand over it says there's condensation. Yeah. All right. So everything is working like it should be. Because usually after they do a change or something like that, something always gets broken and the logic that you have looks like it's working, but it doesn't work. And this pressure is building. That's because this turbo pump is on and the filters are not working. The moment it goes above 13, filters get turned on, right? Yeah. All right. And that helps the efficiency of filters. We good here? Well, this turbo pump should be on or off. Uh, it'll the one that's between those two filters there. Yeah. It its purpose is to empty the common waste line, uh, that brown pipe there. Okay. So the common so that that's why this one is set to zero. Okay. And that right. state it says zero, so we're good. All right, we're good. Okay. All right. And um, I gotta figure out a way to reheat that cooling reserve because it's way too cold so okay. i'm gonna slap a uh, passive heat exchanger between the generator exhaust and the um, output lines gotcha hmm. so there's no liquid in there and there's a little bit of stress but this should be all right so this this purge valve set to where, where if it gets too high it'll purge it all right so everything's good let me go back to, uh, are you doing okay down there, Caden? Yes, I am just try trying to transfer the water. I think I might some, but I'm just dumping it all in the tank for now and seeing what happens. All right. All right. So, um, this is, a uh, is the purge valve set to, yeah, it's set to 30,000. So, 30 megapascals. So if I set this to zero, so this is gonna take any gas that's in the pipe network. Oh yeah, let me ask Ben before I adjust this. Yeah, you wanna change what now? There's a purge valve for the liquid up here. Uh-huh. And it's set to 30,000. That's supposed to be 3,000? Uh, no, I believe 30 is intentional. Um, I don't remember why. <laughs> <laughs> if I look at the tank up here, um, there is gas oh, in the yes, tank. I remember now. So the purge valve will repressurize the gas line from a liquid source up to 30 megapascals. The reason I set it to 30 is because it doesn't do anything useful below 13.5. Okay. Zero makes the liquid freeze in this case. Well, see, there is very little liquid and very little gas in there. All right, so everything's cool. Everything's, well, everything's good. I don't want to say cool, but everything's good. It's very unusual because when Kata connected, we had a bursted um, pipe on our... Uh, on our X because we, we had filled up the X because we're not using it for anything anymore. It's too much of a trouble for refrigeration. So anything that filtered comes through to, when they nerfed the filtrization, oh, I, I have yet another task. Our filters are almost used up up here. So I have to make some more. Oh dear. I got it. Purge valves act similar to a back pressure regulator. It does not measure forward pressure. Yeah, I'm using one of my single because when, um, but only on a water line, because if gas got in there, I didn't have a way of pulling it out. So I just purged it. it seems to work. So anything that needs filtering or refiltering comes through the brown line. It kind of gets held here. And then we we don't turn on the filters until we get about 13 megapascals here because that makes the filters 
much more efficient. So basically we're forcing the filters to filter faster because the, what, however they slowed them down, they weren't that, they weren't awesome anymore. So that's why we have some logic here. So when this gets up to 13, so 30,000 is only effective for the pressure in the liquid pipes, but those are already burst at 6K. No, it's going the other way though. This is only gas. So if we get, if we get, well, I don't know, I'll let Ben re-explain that. Because this purges gas out of water. So if we get, so let me, let me just test that here. So water is fine there. It's supposed to be evaporated, but there's hardly any in there. So I'm not really worried about that. Well, power downstairs. Yeah, I'm seeing that too. Um, I might've gotten that perch about description of backwards there. All right. Um, I think it'll liquefy. It will take gas out of the uh, liquid pipe and put it back into a gas pipe. Right. Oh, so I did get it right. Okay. So if... So what is the... the uh, hang on. So I turned on the solid generator top side. So I can't remember. So will tanks explode at 60 megapascals or 30? Uh, which tanks? So tanks will, um, their max pressure is 60 megapascals. So if, if this gets 30 megapascals of gas, that's when this starts purging and it'll repressurize this line. So if this goes above, yes. um, it'll keep doing that. And if this line fills up, this filters, goes into the filters, and we're gonna put back pressure. Liquid pipes have other limits. Oh, okay, hang on. Yeah, liquid pipes have much lower. Uh, so they can only have a certain amount of gas pressure. Hmm. So they right. start popping so when you're when you're taking gas um when you're taking liquid from a gas pipe and putting it into a liquid system if if it's not pre-pressurized it will immediately like evaporate turn back into gas and then pump straight back into the line if you're using the evaporators okay i guess but what, what a purge valve will allow you to do is to keep a certain pressure to keep it at liquid before it starts pumping the gas out. I'm not seeing. So they don't have liquid pipes listed in here. They just have pipes. There used to be a way you could do a drop down and change this stuff. That might have been somewhere else. Um. Oh yeah, I'll take that. Thank you very much. What do we got here? Oh, it's a it's a it's a garlic knot. Yeah, I got me a knot knot. Um. Well, all right. So this might not be configured exactly the way we want it, but we don't have a pressure problem yet and i don't think we're going to have as soon as i get the back pressure regulator set up um okay sun is out i'm going to turn off the solid i'm going to keep trying to inject some heat back into the cooling loop here because it's gotten too cold all right um so obviously we have some tweaking to do on the filtering here Liquid pipes have got other limits. Yeah, I, I only go by, I mean, it is it actually listed to in here. Did they update it? Oh 
Oh yeah, there you go. Okay. It does have a max pressure. All right. Good to know. So we can adjust that down still. Um, so my initial plan was that this gas would be unregulated in temperature and we would adjust the temperature because of the heat exchanges and a cooling system that we have set up here. Um, I botched it because I accidentally piped in <laughs> our nitrogen, our main nitrogen into a cooling system downstairs and it just brought everything way too cold. So you can see our oxygen is minus two. So it's getting better. It's taking time for everything to come to the right temperature. So again, my idea was to take this, get it to stabilize at a temperature. And then back here would be the mixed gases to be used wherever. So the fuel, the nitrogen, this is the atmosphere for greenhouse, etc. Um, greenhouse number two is a little bit more, it's pretty much the same as greenhouse number one, just bigger because we're actually using Harvey's to do some food and it worked. We've got plenty of tomato seeds and uh, then now they've changed it to tomatoes and need oil. So you had to grow um, soybeans. So we changed that. Um, there's a little bit of logic here to make sure we keep a certain, so my atmosphere for the game is uh, before the tomatoes needed a change was I made sure that we had a 95% O2 and a 5% CO2. I know that's not the real atmosphere. That's what worked for us. And also to keep things growing, but then they changed tomatoes. It needs nitrogen. So that's why um, I add in a little bit of nitrogen in there and make sure everyone stays happy. Now to keep this place cool, um, Ben showed me how to do some passive cooling and that's back here with a little bit of logic. So if it gets too warm, we just turn on this digital valve and cool it until it gets the right temperature. And then ta -da, so we pass the heat from this radiator to these. So the only power being re really used is to monitor and turn on a digital valve. And the only time this ever turns on is when the sun's out. Makes sense because it's glass building. Uh, this is to pull everything out except for CO2. Uh, this is to just make it more pure. What gas is your passive cooling in here? Might be oxygen. Let's see. If it's white, yeah, it's oxygen. Now, the trace elements of nitrogen and CO2 will disappear when I turn this on. Maybe. 690. Oh, it went up. Why is it going up? Where is what going up? Oh, I'm just, I turned on a filter. Oh, no, the CO2 is going to stay. No, this filters out everything but CO2 and O2. So that's going to stay. The nitrogen should be leaving. Maybe. Um, oh, that's right, because I'm adding that. nitrogen. Yeah, so I don't want to do that. So that, that's a little out of date because now we need nitrogen. Never mind. All right. This is so our uh, creative solution to reheat our cooling loop here. Uh, Kida, can I borrow you for a minute? This is a, initially was our rocket launch pad, but the rocket was broken. We haven't tried the new one yet. Um, Ben got the traders to work, but we weren't consistent. So we've kind of abandoned that project. We have our advanced furnace over here. I'm not allowed over here. I do things wrong. I'm just passing through. Um, over here is just a way to recycle stuff that we have too many of or you walk away on a printer and leave something running um over there is site b which was after we get things working over here <laughs> and we learn how to uh, do things site b uh, where are you ben 
Uh, and by the uh, cooling array. Uh, the big one for the... Yep. For the nitrogen? Okay. Site B is to take what we've learned over there and apply it over here and try to stop using chips and put it all on integrated circuits. So this was our first human building. So I've got the cryo bed and the um, sleeper. And again, we didn't really do anything past that because we ran into problems with the phase change. I had bursted pipes because I was trying to use this to heat our cooling. So the only way this place gets power is wirelessly. And since I have them turned off, whatever's on over there is slowly draining those batteries. And that's it. So, here's the problem. This big insulated tank here, that contains the entire uh, cooling gas reserve for the generators. The problem yes. is it's gotten too cold. I don't have an easy way to reheat it. So what's temperatures just look with it? Uh, and then there's the drilling no platforms either. here. Take the dirty ore, dump it into storage, and then we clean it. And then we sort out the coal, uranium, and cobalt, and everything else goes down here and gets uh, smelted. And then we sort the ingots, and then we have our stored ingots here. How cold do you want this to be then? Five Celsius. Five Celsius. So what you could do is you could bypass the exhaust and try turning on some generators. It would be at the fastest because heating this volume of gas with two heaters is going to take uh, a long time. So my suggestion would be cut off the cooling network, completely bypass it, turn on the, the generators. And that should tick it up slightly. Sounds good to me. That would be my suggestion. Because um, otherwise you're just going to... Because what's happening is um, this cooling loop is continually cooling and it's pumping the cold gas straight into here. This is the problem I had. So when it cools down, it's coming here at minus 81. And then it's going to hit your warm gas at that and it's going to heat it's going to cool down your gas yeah i might set up a bypass over here so a bypass you can put on some logic to say if that's too cold just to close a digital valve here and open a digital valve on this side and then just pump the gas straight through and that should keep it at five degrees providing that's the engines funny. are running yeah the other option is to um, have a completely separate cooling loop, which has a completely separate tank, uh, which will cool the gas um, so you have like a separate loop. And then you exchange the heat uh, uh, um, um, for heat exchanger to, to your actual cooling gas, but that takes a lot more gas than you need because you need double the volume, if that makes sense. Yeah, not worried about the volume, though, oddly enough. We actually have a lot of gas. <laughs> <laughs> ben and I have got no gas issues. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the problem I have was, um, so I now have a completely uh, isolated cooling system that cools it to, like, because I'm using NOS fuel, it cools it to 100, uh, the minus 120. And then I use that as a heat exchange for the actual gas that's going to the, um, the actual gas generators yeah, um, no this way. was before the cooling and then that turns off and pumps all the cooling gas out so it's there's a separate like there's a reservoir and when that reservoir heats up it then opens to the um to the radiators and when that gets too cold like if uh, when the engines aren't in use when that gets too cold it turns off about five valves and turns on one pump and it pumps right. it out of the radiators. So it's using a, uh, like a reservoir system rather than a uh, like a feed through system like this is. So a consistent spot here. Yeah, that's what I need to do too. All right, well, I'll set up the bypass for now so at least we have a working feed for the jennies here. 
Yeah, and that will and that will heat up eventually, and then you can just turn your cooling loop on. Because the problem is, is when your engines aren't in use, it's the gas is still continually being co hey, Linux. cooled until it gets pushed through. Yeah, exactly. Oh, some random ice. I'll take that. All right. I need to. So I think a I need to have a drink. Spot some still out. Be right down here. All right. So let's do. That's uh, 133 liters, that was 6,000. got Ben and Kata in here. Kata's got some uh, innovative ideas to uh, he's going to do a water cooled gas power generator, otherwise known as the fish tank. And he has just passed along a suggestion to help Ben with some uh, heating because our gas generators are getting too cold. All right. Well, this... power down here again, didn't we? Yeah. All right, I'm turning up the solid up here. We're almost out of power up here. To do some maintenance. I'm going to bring some more coal down there. Ben, do you have any spare lockers on you? Uh, I could make some. All right, because uh, I'll bring a whole bunch of coal down to put in a locker down there. Uh, we'll make sure you have one ready. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, this ice crusher is going to be taking a bit of power down there. I'd set it to zero to make it go quicker, but then I just have to heat it back up again. Where's the best place to get some uh, food and water? Greenhouse number two. Uh, two. Yeah, where where the chair is. Ben's chair room. <laughs> Hey, there's a locker. I'm going to be right back. Um, all right. I'm going to also put a little tiny shoot cue system for putting coal into. We didn't use any shoots down here, did we? No, there should be a plenty of shoots topside. can use the furnace for the initial water heat up, Lector suggests. Uh, okay. So this and, and this. Yeah, I've got a uh, transfer, a heat transfer from the poopy line here from the generators. You got a what? I'm transferring poopy heat back into the system. Oh, 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 nice. Thank, wait, is that on purpose? Yep. Okay. So I get cold poop topside instead of hot poop. Gross. 
less smelly? Yes, I guess. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I'm not a, an engineer of the uh, sewage system. Can generate some poopy gas. Hang on. Stuck. Uh, actually, what I need you to do is turn off the um, logic that uh, bleeds the poopy line dry. All right. All right. Logic writers off. If I turn all the logic off. All right. All right. No, just the one that uh, pulls down the poopy line. Well, it should be sitting at 26.4, right? Uh, should... 26 kPa? Yeah. I've That's... got nothing here. Now it's 40. So did I turn off the wrong one? You're talking about the one that leads it dry into the filtering system, right? Yeah. Once it says they're all, all the logic off and the turbo pumps off, so. So what's bleeding the poopy line here? Um, well, where where is your poopy line at? Which one are you talking about? I mean, from the generators when they're on? Because they're not on right now. Yeah. No, I'm trying to cycle on and up, them on and off to um, get some heat back into the system here, but it keeps getting dry. Oh, dry yeah. Up. So um, turn off, turn off the first two switches, so the vents aren't on. But those just bump. In yeah, I know, but you you, ca you can't get the generator on because it's too cold in here. Right, now cycle the generator until it fires up minus 70 degrees in that room. I have to do it three or four times. And the way I found out for that one is if you look at the switch and the generator, you can see the pistons in the generator so you'll know when it's fired up, when it keeps going. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Right. Yeah, Ben just yeah yeah me. Right. <laughs> is the pressure here on the brown line uh -huh. It goes up to 10 kPa and then it drops back straight back down to zero. All right, so that means I, that I need pressure in here. So here's our our line going out, right? And that line goes out, so it goes up here. So the only thing that's drawing, so you're not. Where's it going out then? Oh, the you have the one-way valve. So is it going to fill up? past all these one ways until you start seeing pressure? Um, the one way essentially is supposed to uh, right. have pressure to flow one way, assuming that the input's higher than the output. So I see 199 kilopascals right here. So 99 there. There's nothing here. So it's 211 before, so somewhere so on draining the gas. Oh, all right, the because output. there's a burst line right here. I found it. Do you have a brown? Do you have any pipes on you? Got a burst line right here. Uh, yep, yeah, I do. Got it. Thank you. That's gonna fix the problem. So it got too. So our exhaust got too cold too. I don't know. Yeah, nothing was on, so it was constantly cooling and going around. Now, if you cycle the generator, 
Yeah, yeah these are not insulated, so these will slowly lose their heat. There you go, yep. Yeah. That's why the heat, insulates all the lines. <laughs> Somebody was asking that last week. Why are you using insulated pipes everywhere? Right. There is your answer. Because it's just too much of a headache not to. Alright, so this. Alright, Ben. Can I just borrow you one second if you're free? I need to punch up for the ceiling to place. Uh, I'm only going to use one for now. Um, one of the extendable radiators, because I'm going to use it to heat this water and when it's on to cool the water as well. Okay, so you want me to drill a hole up for you or? Yeah, just straight up. Okay. <laughs> from above the generator? Uh, no, from like over here somewhere. Cause... Oh, okay. I'll pass the pipes up through it. He doesn't want to mess up our landscape. No, I'm not being responsible for any landscaping. When I was doing this, um, I didn't realize that I hadn't completely welded up the 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 uh, frames around my generator. And when I changed all the voxels, um, I basically I vented everything and couldn't work out for ages what was happening. Uh, oh, still, like, that's what I was making. Ben, we're gonna get bursted poopy lines again. It's too cold. So, uh, why is it cooling so far? Oh, yeah, you have not a lot of gas in there because it only produces a small amount and it's radiating. Yeah, it's a pretty big network. I'm trying to get a generator fire up here. Right, yeah, good to go with the hole. Thank you. Oh, that's perfect, thank you. Where do we come out of? Oh. In the middle of nowhere, that's alright. Uh, I was worried I was going to come off in the base. This off. Oh, yeah. uh, I turned on the wrong thing. So, that one off and that one on. Go. I think. Is your coolant line heating up? Yes, your coolant line is heating up. It's now at minus 47. Yay, progress. Oh, my suit's screaming about something. I should pay attention. Yeah, mine is too. Uh, minus 17 is going into there now. Trying to that blue yeah. is the one coming out, so you got There's no... 53 for the cooling. See if we got this. There we go. Yeah, that keeps cycling out of this generator over here until the temperature is stabilized a little bit. It is. So the blue line is your coolant line that is now heating and cooling. Yeah, so that's now heating up, so that's at minus 30. It's not going to stay there running. Go. Oh, 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 hang on, hang on. It's a delicate balancing act because, oh, it got too cold. All right. Uh, let me, I'm going to try to, oh, you're doing that one? All right, I'm going to let you do that one because running back and forth trying to see the gauges say. Yeah, the switch on your side's not conveniently located. This one is. Right. You know, another way is temporarily once you slap some heaters on the um there's a two running back there oh okay never mind yeah, oh my air is low oh no what <laughs> i'm running out of air oh okay he's gonna pass uh, out there's an oxygen canister refilled by the oxygen tank top side <laughs> I hope I make it. He's gonna get lost. Uh, Go to the filters. I'm going, I'm going. I'm at uh, 100 pascals. Oh, you're fine. Oh, oh you'll you're be fine. 
yeah, my kid. Yeah, so right there. <sighs> I thought it was saying jetpack, Greg. I was like, what's wrong with my jetpack? That's the green one. Uh, I guess, um, Linux, I'm sorry if I didn't answer a question. We got a total of three. And um, we started with a bunch of bursted pipes again. So I think we fixed that. Now we have power problems. Trying to fix that. All right. Good. I'm talking to myself. That's awesome. Hope that. Me, I'm going to fix that now. Put one of the windows in backwards. Okay, the box is made. We just need the water now. Um, Andy, we should extend that uh, green line to the generator back there because I think we've ripped that out the last time. Oh, yeah. The right. green heavy line. Right. Yeah, I, I did a very thorough cleanup. Thank you very much. Yes, yes you did. It's very, it's very tight. So I have, I don't know how you guys want to connect uh, the logic to this, but I've just, I've placed it and you should be able to reach inside and put uh, your wires yes. how you need to. So the power distribution line is the red heavy wire. You just slap a transformer on it. Uh, and then the generator's output should be connected to the green heavy line that's the feed to the batteries. Okay. Yeah, and he's so gonna give you a hand with that. So the logic to the red and the power to the green. Um, yeah, green the output. Red are, the red's the power distribution grid. Oh. For the entire underground complex. Okay, so the generator needs to be hooked up to the green line, and that's what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Hang on, I'm still collecting coal and stacking it in the queue system, so we have generator. Yeah, I'm still trying to reheat the system here. I think it's up to negative 30. That's okay. It's going to take a, a lot more water to get this thing actually up and running. Um, but um, it's just transferring it is going to be the interesting part but and I'll put in the cooling array in a moment <clears> as well right. and then I'll program up the logic do you want me to use like IC or do you want me to use logic chips? whatever you prefer I'll use IC then alright we have 50% power downstairs
Well, you're gonna have a lot of nitrogen because of all this. What else? Logic chip stuff. Oh, that's on purpose. Huh. The power would come through the you yellow one. Right? Should be. Because if those. I think something's back. There you go. Okay, thank you. Mm. Don't know what that was. Seventy-two percent downstairs. Eighty-one percent tops. Help with a little bit of power saving them. Turn off the little machines. They broke something major in the last patch. I'm trying to figure out what, but it looks like the liquid and gas within the same place no longer transfer heat. Oh, that's great. That's... Uh, it's, it's, it's always been the case, so it's been an issue. <laughs> How liquids and gases are heating. It doesn't heat them the same. It's annoying. When I was trying to hear all of the water, hey, I was trying to do it with my Peters, it wasn't working, so I just used the solar heating. That's going to be the longest part of this build, is heating that water. Well, I was going to say, oh, we have plenty of power, but no, that's not the case anymore. Do we have a stock of steel frames anywhere? Do we have what? Steel frames? Steel frames. I don't want to stop making things if we have. No, you go good. Yeah, if if we have anything extra, because we actually haven't been building anything topside. I don't think there's any frames topside. I'm not just shy type. about using frames here. Do what you got to do. Yep. Okay. It was a reconfigure my old base, and then I found all the iron frames you get when you start right in the middle. I was like, oh, this brings back memories. Yeah. Soft. Down. Actually, I think I have a transfer. Cool. All right. All right. So, um, power should be somewhat stabilized. Ben's trying to heat the poopy line. Uh, 
Solid generator is on downstairs. It's got a little tiny Q system with some coal in it. The locker with a little bit of extra coal, just in case. Oh, um, I was coming over here because pressure regulators. Do we have autos? Hey, Ben, I was kind of curious. You know how our first generator, we just, we had a blowout for some reason? Uh, which blowout? The, the pressure, the, the frame around the generator is gone, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is any of the logic that's behind the panels here important to the power transfers, or is it just for making the generator work? Uh, no, some of it is related to the power transfer. Oh, I can see the bat. I was just wondering if something maybe got melted when everything blew up. Yeah. On the left-hand side is... Well, you can tell the logic yeah. is behind the colored panel. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it looks like all the wires are good. I was just running by that and was just kind of curious. Right. Yeah, it should be on its own isolated transformer line, so it should be all right, no matter what happens. realize I've got the spare transformer here. machines as I go as well. Ben, did you want all the um, waistline? Do you want that swap between uh, the insulated pipe that helped the effort down here overall? Um, 
it would help uh, up to the one-way valve, yes. So from, from this valve all the way back, or you mean up to where the cooling is? Uh, from the two Jennies uh, output? So from any generator output all the way up to the cooling system. Uh, up. Oh, I see what you're saying. All right. The, the brown line output of the Jenny up to the first check valve. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Right. All right. I'll do that as soon as I'm done with the back pressure regulators on the gas. It is your heavy cable, but. Yeah, I just realized it. <laughs> Somebody turned off the stagger. I did. That was I, me. Oh, no, that, <laughs> that, that, that was that, me. He did it. He's trying to save power. How much power we got over there, by the way? Uh, 60.5%. I do have an idea for um, nitrous oxide um, fueling pen, but it does involve manually changing canisters when they're empty. Yeah, that's fine. We can. Uh, we already have a nitrous line uh, right, right behind you here. The uh, olive colored line. That's a direct feed to the reserve back there. So what I usually do is I compress it down into a liquid because you can get it nice and cold, but. Um, it does explode quite often. Oh, we don't want that. That's a bad idea. Turn you off. I'll leave the stacker on for you then. Thank you. I actually didn't know you could um, do that with the stackers. I always put like a shoot corner in. No. Oh. I didn't realize they would actually um, pull them in. Yeah, I learned that by at pure accident. this all backwards. No. So the basic system of this bend is that it will, uh, when it's on, it will force in constant liquid. It takes a bit to sort of prep itself. So it will force in liquid to uh, completely fill this chamber with gas. And if it's at 40 degrees, it will be at the, the pressure needed to run the generator. And then because it's a sheer volume of liquid, it takes a long time to heat up and you can cool it down quite efficiently with uh, with one or two radiators if it's normal fuel. Oh, uh, yeah. So it, it will force it in and then the passives will just take it out because it's all on the same uh, network. Um, so this corner here will have to be shifted because I'll be running a pipe through that. Oh, yeah, so let me re -cable that here. Yeah, that wire. Um, so I'll be running a... I've just kept it separate because I don't want it to uh, vent inside the chamber until it's up to temperature. Um, when the generator is off, it will... Um, it will slowly radiate heat inside this chamber. So 
because my base is purely underground. Um, I can't heat up with the solar. I may do some logic on the on the extendable radiator that's straight up there to turn towards the sun if it's um, too cold to heat it. But the big prep work is getting the water into this tank. Uh, I need it to be mostly full because each the cell will take um, 8,000 um, litres of water. You don't need 8,000. Um, but the more you have, the less, um, the, the longer it takes to, to heat. Because when I first turned it on, it wouldn't function at all. It would just spike its temperature really quickly, and I thought it wasn't working. I came. I had like a win AFK for about 20 minutes on and off and I came back to it and it, I turned it on and it just, it worked. Ben, I think you're saying it's all about volume. Yeah. And so water. Each gas can, each mole of gas in this game oh, can, can take it. Uh, and like a certain amount of heat until it changes temperature. Pollutant and water are the best, and carbon dioxide is as well. All right, I was gonna, Kato, what did you say was the best for the back pressure radio? You said 3360 or something like that? Yeah, 3360. Uh, no, uh, 3600. Um, that's for the pollutant. Oh, just for, for the pollutant. Oxide. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, just for the pollutant. For. Okay. For oxygen, at what temperature are you wanted to keep the oxygen at? Uh, 30 is my target. So oxygen will happily sit. So oxygen will not turn into a liquid until the pressure. Or say, um, it would have to be. Minus or 117 until it starts at 4,600 megapascal. So 40. Uh, so 4, if I set it to 600. All right, so I'll set it to 4,500 then. You could probably um, I actually set it higher unless it's going to hit minus 110. All right. Which I don't think it is. So your oxygen is fine. The ones you want to be uh, worried about is your pollutant and your nitrous oxide. All right. So what is a, I guess, we have to have different pressures because of how the the coolant, the, the, the when it gets cold and it liquefies, right? Yeah, so um, at higher pressures, you're, um, it's like a pressure cooker. So you have a pressure cooker and you increase the pressure inside the pressure cooker. So the water can stay a liquid at a higher pressure and that's what like effectively um, happens in this situation. So you have a really high pressure and it effectively lowers the boiling point of the oxygen. So it can exist as a liquid. Right, the so, oxygen is not gonna freeze for a long time. So if I put system. it at 6,500, we should be okay on O2 then. Uh, yeah, you should be fine. That's only six megapascals. Yeah, you could probably set it to 20. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about the oxygen. All right, and then uh, yeah, the C it's spectacularly hard to liquefy nitrogen. Uh, I mean oxygen. All right, yeah. CO two. What is our what is our safe limits at? Uh, so carbon dioxide again. It's actually really difficult to liquefy carbon dioxide. It's really easy to freeze it, but hard to liquefy it. So um, that will stay a liquid, uh, um, a gas, until it hits minus eleven degrees at four thousand seven hundred. All right, so 20, uh, we can do that at 20 megapascals also. Yeah, because right. that's and really then, hot in there. All right, and then X is set at 3360. What about hydrogen? Um, so hydrogen. Yeah, that one's also difficult yeah. to liquefy. All right, so I'll, yeah, I'll set that at 20. Out. Nitrogen yep. can be set at 20, and then the nitric oxide should be at 3360, right? So the nitrous oxide, this one's even worse than the pollutant. 
Oh, um, okay. So nitrous oxide. Um, I store this as a liquid now because of just how ridiculous it is. Because it will liquefy at 30 degrees. If you want it at 30, it will liquefy at 10,090. No, sorry. Uh, uh, 1,090. I misread it. Alright, so 1,090. Alright. Yeah, 1,090. It will liquefy at 30. So we got to set it so like 600 kilopascals in or 900 kilopascals in yeah be safe all right all right because we actually barely get any you can see we only have 78 kilopascals right now yeah you you only really get it from um from smelting of the silver i think yeah it yeah or right. um or, or using the ice so i wouldn't worry about it too much um but that should solve liquid in these tanks uh you wouldn't even need to turn these on unless you start getting liquid but the well, pollutant one is um oh, oh, pollutant's black for you yeah yeah good news the coolant loop is now up to ten oh nice hooray i'm helpful <laughs> this power can be why is it how's it that one's always oh, on oh, okay, okay. But, um with the uh, nitrous if you start to gather it just have a bleed off into a liquid tank. Um, the way I fuel my generators is um, I use canisters um, and then I take it as liquid and I slowly trickle it to gas form. Um, but let's like say it, it does, it, it's like manually changing a um, filter each, each, each time because you have to re add a canister when it's empty. Ben, he's making us sound like country bumpkins here, you know that? Uh, it was uh, a guy posted it on the workshop. I was like, oh, that's an interesting idea. That was a joke. But a lot of my stuff actually comes from um, uh, from Ben, actually. <laughs> well, like, oh, that's you a know, really good idea. between Ben, Electro, and yourself, there's a wealth of knowledge out there. And what we've always struggled with is that when they make changes, they don't test the impact. And that's what throws this game into a love-hate relationship with people that want to do things really cool and somewhat automated, but when they keep futzing with stuff, you know, it's about the futzing. Ben, you had the burst pipe on your uh, liquid heat exchanger. I just replaced it. Thank you. Just don't upset his coffee mugs. He knows exactly what machines are on. No, no, it's okay. It's the cooling system. It's because that top side radiator is is liquid. That's the heat transfer medium that uh, they selected. Um, I had to disable the whole system because it just keeps freezing. So I yeah. have to put in that safety in place before I turn it back on. Yeah, you need the logic to turn it off at, at night time. Or when it's too hot. Looks like I don't want to toot any horns here, but I can't see the percentage. But I got got power topside still, and we're at fifty-eight percent and dropping downstairs. Now normally our generators would kick in. All right, so we shouldn't get any bursted pipes, back pressure regulators turned on, so I'm causing a little bit more power drain topside. Yeah, well, now we got a new problem. So that big tank down here, it's almost empty. Where are all the nitrogen? Is there a leak somewhere? Uh, I think most of it is in the cooling loop. All right, so, uh, Turbo fan, turbo uh, uh, pumps are on, trying to keep pressure up. That doesn't make sense. The cooling loop is currently isolated, but you have 16 megapascals in. You have 16 megapascals in the pipe. Before yeah, we're missing. That. We're missing some gas. We're all good. 15 kilomoles. Oh, these pumps Why? aren't on. Why are those pumps not pumping? Uh, is it because this is at minus 16? 
Is there logic to say only allow it in if it's at a certain temperature? Yeah, the logic's behind you. It looks for the input temperature. And if it's uh, higher... Yeah, so it's cooling now. It says 280 Kelvin is when it's going to allow it in. Oh, right. And it's so at 285. Right so it's because it's not connected to the cooling loop anymore, remember? You oh, isolate yeah. it. So you just need to add a bit of loops. So if I open this valve quickly. Actually, I was just going to turn on the pumps manually. And then, yeah, it's cool. It's cooling now. We're at. <clears throat> yes. So this is minus sixteen. This is where you want it, isn't it? Um, we want positive five, actually. Positive five. But here, just turn on one of those turbo pumps. <laughs> <right> <laughs> Sorry about that. Do you have a clown? People don't like clowns. They scare that people. My, that was my wife. She stuck up behind me. She likes to do it when I'm playing games. So... Tell her stationers is a serious thing. It's not a game. It is. So... Oh, I can see what's happening. So what's happening is... It's condensating this pipe. I don't know why. It shouldn't be. Are these heaters logic controlled? No. Apologies if anybody jumped out of the skin like I did. Oh, my skin's intact. But that was our intention, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> So the temperature of the tank is minus, well, let's just say zero, effectively. And you've got 22 kilomoles in there. Yeah, it's looking better now that the pumps are running. Yeah. All right, I gotta redo this whole logic for this cooling array. I gotta slap a heat exchanger in here somewhere. Which means I need to use a different gas than nitrogen, which means I need to purge this system out. Are you going to go with the, the separate cooling system and exchange heat? Yeah. So, you have to purge this cooling. cooling loop is full of nitrogen and it's currently at negative 107 celsius <laughs> it's too cold too cold no kidding <laughs> oh i'm not kidding it's too cold um okay well i can either run it back into the poopy line i'm uh currently swapping out the poopy line to insulated or run it back up the nitrogen line since we've extended it up there uh, are you wanting to use it again? Yes. So, you, there's enough room in this tank that you could just pump the whole thing into that tank? Yeah, the problem is that it's going to drop the temperature dramatically, which I want to avoid. That's true. So, oh, I'm thinking I'm just going to dump it somewhere else. The question is where? Oh yeah, that's far too cold at that. Okay, uh, um, I'm going to extend the nitrogen uh, line that we have back there and purge this out and swap it with a different gas. Uh, what gas are you going to use? Well, uh, this would not be emotionally compliant, but uh, we could use volatiles for this. <clears throat> okay, yep. We're on the move. Oh. It's going to be safe, right? Yeah, sure. yeah pretty safe. <laughs> uh, I'm no longer going to work underground. So, volatiles have specifically a 20 kilojoules. I did not know that. I've never used it as a cooling agent. Yeah, I'm all for volatiles. Volatiles it is. 
<laughs> well, did you want to use O2? We're using O2 as a coolant. Uh, the specific heat of oxygen is... So if you go to the, the Stationpedia and you look at uh, oxygen, it's actually better oxygen, 21 kilojoules, but it, it will look... It, it doesn't like to stay at gas really cold. Yeah, that's the problem. I need something that's going to stay oh, okay. in a gas state, even at negative 100 Celsius. Uh, and the pressures could be up to 3 megapascals easily. Right, let me just check how my water's doing. I'll probably write the IC logic for this thing off stream because it's going to take me a bit to get it running. I need to work out how to get the thing to face away from the sun. Which water is it this time? And you're gonna have to do a little bit more mining for ice, GC. Alright, that's fine. <laughs> so much fun um, the first time. I've um attached a volume pump to the to the ice crusher to just continuously pump ice into the um the tanks. That's what I was doing, but we I had a bursted uh valve there because I guess it's going to keep trying to do it and get cold, and it's going to burst that insulated pipe. Fills up. Yeah, and these uh, this tank's not insulated. The, yeah. the Mark IIs can hold a lot more. Well, I had a few of those sitting around. That's all I went with. That's fine. It's going to have to. The help. It's going to have to be fine, Mister. All right, don't come in here and start <laughs> saying you want all the all the fancy <laughs> stuff. Ben and it's, I it's don't go for the day. fancy stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's my first day. Um, but I've um, made the fish bowl. If you want to come see, I will. I'm in the middle of a project. All right, let's go see fish bowl. All right, so generator. The the generator isn't there. It's got two um, two input valves which are powered. And that will okay. force the liquid into the chamber, and then it's We're, got the two liquid oh, inputs. Oh, through the will, through the vents, I got you. Okay. Yep, yeah. and then and it will circulate um, to the passive ones. So the only okay. two active ones are there. Oh. And then it will. This entire pipe network is going to be one pipe network, so it's not going to be separated. Okay. This is the uh, reservoir tank. Yeah. Um, it's... and up there is the. Ouch. <laughs> you yeah. can't. Yeah, I, that I, is the I'm, last I'm, liquid rated. I'm stuck. I, 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 I'm. St I, I can't get out. I'm okay. I'm coming back down. Scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't get out there. So that's the uh, large um, like liquid radiator. What gotcha. that's going to do is, um, if it's if it's too cold, it will face away from the sun. And oh, will, using logic. And it right. will. Yeah, he, and it will gotcha. uh, open itself up if it's too. Uh, uh, if it's too cold, it will face towards the sun and open up. Okay. If it's too cold, um, it will it will face away, Sweet. and it will open up. Um, so, um, in I theory, just... that's all we need. Let me fix one of your pipes. The output should be an insulated brown pipe. Oh yeah, I I didn't paint anything i That's figured right. you guys would do that uh which one's the output uh this one oh, wait. Yeah. now the input's orange and the output's brown so yep. yeah right and then and that is um uh, once it's primed that is the entire system is this is all you need that will be awesome um, and I will continue to uh, slowly fill it with water. You're doing the sneaker net with all the uh, water? Sweet. Yep. I mean, it might be faster if you just want to run a bunch of insulated pipe from the ice crusher to that big tank. Uh, that's a very good idea. 
That's Why five good ideas I've had this month. Yeah. I did not think of that. And neither did I until just now. I've been um, slowly just making the. Um, it's been quite difficult with the lag, of, um, with the slight delay I have in positioning it, the. Uh... It's weird because you've got a, a you got a better ping than I do. You got a better ping than a uh, Ben. Uh, that's weird. I am on um, a weird fiber optic village internet. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's days. Oh, they took the ping out. Never mind. They used to have the ping oh, yeah. in there. Oh, my ping is minus one, according to the... Yeah, that's, that, the that's not right, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to make a lot of insulated pipe. Um, we can uh, start disassembling the old, uh, the first gas generator and retrieve yeah. some parts that way. You need, you need the logic though for some of that, right? Yeah, but you can rip out the pipes. That's okay. fine. And also there's lockers over here with a lot of insulated pipe too. Yeah, I've already gone through most of them. Oh, they're all gone now. Never mind. Are they liquid pipes? So oh no no he needs liquid no. right never mind Yeah, I, I, I just initially put that there because we actually didn't have a high demand of crushing anything. It's just I wanted a place where the sun would hit it. I'll leave it alone. Oh, I thought I did it first time then. Generators are now at six degrees here. They're not that cold. Oh, good. Perfect. I'm still swapping out the um, smelly, poopy line for insulated.
Have you tried out those new goggles yet? No. Been uh, trying to um, trying to get stuff stable here. That that's for electrical stuff, you said, right? Yeah, it will allow you to, but it will uh, look for. So if you have um, like a large base, like you have with pipes behind walls or behind frames, it's designed to um, allow you to see them away and. I'm interested to see if you can see uh, uh, breaks in the cables easier. Or oh, if it's just, oh, I got you, cause, right. Because hopefully that will be... Hopefully they thought of that and will allow you to do that. All right, Ben. The um, the exhaust from generator 2, 3, and 4 are now swapped over to insulated. I haven't connected the fourth one since we haven't actually got that one online yet. Okay. Awesome, thank you. Yep. Ooh. All right, now I extended the uh, red heavy line to its own transformer for Kato. Uh, Thank you. We still need to extend uh, the green line. All right. Don't, I don't want to worry too much about that yet, because like I said, this is going to take... Uh, so he just needs a yeah. green line that ties in with the rest of them? Yep. That's your red line. And the output is going to be... Okay, that's right. Yeah, if we um Kata, if, if you if want you, to increase if you want to um get the uh well, I guess it doesn't matter. Do I have any green on you? How's our power doing? I mean once it's all uh, working I'll I'll run some testing and then we can connect it up straight away because uh you you'll have to do your logic um Oh, Maybe we should do some What's... rockets to get some mass amount. Probably. Sounds like a capital idea. I tell you what, if they would stop changing things so things don't break, then we can try to try new features. Right, so it looks like power. I launched one rocket and I didn't get much back, but that was when they um, uh, when they first changed it. After. I completely blew up my base there was nothing left because yeah. I used to just launch the rocket from on top of it because I thought oh yeah this looks really awesome but now it does that like flame damage uh, alright let's see here um, let me get some heavy cable yeah. the developer's wicked sense of humor right there yeah I agree. Yeah, well, I lost my base when there was phase change. I lost it when there was rocket changes. I lost it randomly when it just wouldn't load anymore. Um, luckily, one of the backups loaded. Yeah, that was a scary time. Air tank low. Yeah, I'll bet. We had one... When they changed the pressure in the smaller tanks, we lost a small section of a base once. Yeah, when um, he logged in and did the fix for the phase change, it took a while to understand why everything was so hot all of a sudden. Oh, I was chasing and burst pipes down like crazy until someone says, evaporator condense. <laughs> and that's when Ben started experimenting and go, I think this will work. <laughs> right, I'm purging the cooling system right now. Cold nitrogen heading your way. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta cool down the entire thing. Cause loads of burst pipes. That's well, I already did that one, so we got a heater set up for that. Yeah, the stress on the pipe's still alright. Should be fine. Right. I mean, if the stress from the pipe was um, from the cooling process, I could understand it a little more.
if it was a cracking because it was constantly freezing and cooling. Well, if um, yeah. So in the green line, it's yeah, getting much colder. And I, oh, I didn't stop. All right, so there's a valve actually on the, the main nitrix. Uh, and uh, I just threw the valve, but I was too slow. I'm gonna turn on the heaters on. The... Yeah, you can turn on the heaters if you want, that's fine. Yeah, I turned on the heaters for the recirc. I closed the valve so we won't mix too much cold up there. Ooh. Yeah, it's okay. taking a while to pump out, but yeah. Alright, there's only 815 kilopascals of nitrogen up here, so. But I guess yeah, that actually. Most doesn't... businesses are in our giant pipe network. Yeah, well, it's 2.61 kilomoles, so that's nothing to sneeze at, but still, yeah. And, um. Alright, let that sort itself out. Okay, I now have a pipe net from the ice crusher to the water tank, so I can just flick that on and it will just keep filling. Now, do I still want to retrieve the heat from the generator's exhaust? Hmm. I don't know, you tell me. So, I won't be able to take that green line straight. I'm gonna do... Um, can someone check this line and have a look if... Yep. Because it says it's got that CO2 in it, but... I don't understand how it would get CO2 in it. I see CO2 in the line. Yeah, it was a minor quantity, but yeah, it's there. Just use or a... a purge. Purge. It should impact you. I just use a purge valve and pump it out if you're concerned. Yeah, it's just cause... leave it. Or just leave it. No, because it's going to heat up and uh, change the thing. I need it to be pure. So, um, but I don't know how it's got in there. <clears throat> um, probably when you CO two ice. Well, or if you put a tank on the connector and it's got the CO two, then it just it it'll uh, do the whole line. Yeah. All right. Let's see ice crusher. So let's see here. Hey Ben. Yep. So in our spaghetti network here, behind all the generators, I'm trying to find a mutual place where the green wire, the output of all of our lines go. I'm trying to find a place. I think I found one. I think if I go. Um, so the main green wire is down here. Yeah. If I start going this way, I just have to hop over a couple wires down there. So, you be okay with that there? Yeah, whatever you need to do, that's fine. All right, to go back towards his generator. Yep. All Sweet. right. Let's go get purge valve and pump out the CO2. some of that cold gas line.
if I should regulate uh... Uh, tell me about it. <laughs> well, it's just I have I seem to have a depth perception problem when it comes to lining up wires and pipes in any sort of game. Oh, uh, yeah. Is that going to allow me to go through that? The um, oh, oh. cold return line for the cooling system got too hot. It was up to 50 Celsius. So I reconnected it to the cooling system and it's just about to hit 5 Celsius. There it goes. Yeah, we're pumping it back into the big tank. That means a draining cooling system is going to take longer now. Did you just put more gas in it? I did. But at least it's not as cold. <laughs> <laughs> to live with that tiny amount of CO2 that made it into the tank. Oh, there's more than a tiny amount, 85 moles. No, that's not a lot. I guess what the CO2 is doing is allowing the water to stay liquid rather than having steam or water vapor. Oh, is uh, it yeah. getting getting a little cold in there? No, no, it's uh, it's all insulated, so it's staying the same. But normally you'd have a little bit of um, a little bit of water vapor and a little bit of um, and a little bit of CO2. Uh, no, and a little bit of liquid water, but because the CO2 in there is allowing the water to stay 100% liquid. So, so I'll, if, if it causes a problem, I'll filter it out, but if not, I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, it should be alright. The... Uh... I believe water will vaporize under the Armstrong limit, which is 6 or 7 kPa. So... <clears throat> that is off. Turn that back on. So, that should be your trigger point there. If the CO2 pressure falls below 7 kPa, you can expect the water to vaporize. Okay, I'm now transferring water, just using the crusher and some pumps. Yay! 
around. You'll just be able to chuck in ice until this tank is... Uh... Yeah, I can do that. But weirdly, though, um, it's at <laughs> it's at thirty-eight kilopascals <laughs> with the uh, small CO two in there, so um, I don't need to heat it to forty degrees to get it into. Maybe I've just uh, uncovered a more efficient way of doing it. Nice by by creating a new tank that already gives you CO two. Interesting. No, by um, having a little bit of. The, the the CO2 is the, the temperature needed for the gas fuel generator whereas if I was doing it with pure water I'd have to heat the water to 40 degrees to get to 20 kilopascals right yeah that's so right. so now with the tiny amount of, uh, of CO2 it's only got 85 moles in there, it's pressurizing it to 38 kilopascals. But my worry is that is the CO2 going to expand too much and burst the pipes? But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, because I think that's an interesting experiment. That's why we put the Cause... fish tank all the way at the end. <laughs> <laughs> but the poor fish, they'll just explode. Because when someone says unique and interesting, that means you give them space. <laughs> No, that is, um, is that I thought it would be a problem, but it might not be. If it is, I can, um, I can just vent it out. And then and there's um, we can... plenty of space to vent it out. See, see my point here? Space. <laughs> All this space far away from anything important. Um, Kata, Yo. your generator is hooked up to the output. Okay. For power. The, um, the, uh, brown insulated pipe between your trips of water, if you want to just print out yeah. a bunch of insulated pipe, you can come right oh, down just... this. Yeah. Because the, the gas and the, uh, output are right here down this channel here. So I can just run the line straight up. Yeah, you can hop can over, we... put a junction here and hop over. Um, and the only thing we do for the for the fuel is we put two uh, pressure regulators at 70 to make sure we maintain that. Yes, okay, that's doable. All right, let's go back and see what Ben's been doing here. Hang on, I'm checking our power. Fifty percent. All right. Oh. I, I'm going to find an image because looking at what Ben's project looks like reminds me of a scene from Curly trying to be a plumber from the Three Stooges. Oh, there's a. I can just uh, check this. Is this a. Um, oh, this is an unloader? I can just check this back back into it. Oh, probably, yeah. Alright, so. Yeah, for dumping your belt full of ice. Hey, it's six degrees Celsius over here. But, where did you dump all the nitrogen to? Back into the nitrogen. Oh, did you? Alright. Which I've extended over here. Where is here at? Uh, here is being where you are. There'll uh -huh. be a load of nitrogen being dumped in from this uh, water processing. You're not over here where I'm at. No, I'm printing something. I'll oh. join you here. Hmm. All right. Uh, so I need some brown pipe. There uh, is some. some there are some insulated um, in the lockers there. I've. Uh, 
Got some, I just need to uh, make it brown. There's nothing there, so you've emptied out the cooling except for... Alright, that's nothing to worry about. So, they're... That's disconnected. You have... Oh, you have it. So where'd you put all the nitrogen? Oh, it's in the tank. I see. Warming up. All right. Yeah, some of it's there. Some of it's back into the uh, nitrogen line, which is over here. Oh, I see. Okay, gotcha. Oh wait, no, I don't. I don't see anything. Oh, 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 here. The waste pipe for this generator is not plugged in. Is this correct? Oh, uh, yeah, because we haven't put uh, number four online yet. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure I hadn't accidentally cut something. No, no. Now, we thought we were going to do something new with the generator, but then we ran into the cooling issue with the generator, so we don't know. All right, so... So the, the gas is at the proper temperature, but we have a cooling problem that it, it keeps getting into too cold. Is that what I surmised? Uh, it's two problems. Uh, yeah, the first problem is that, uh, as Kata mentioned, when the generators are not running, the cooling system here keeps cooling. And what ends up happening is that it freezes the refrigerant in it. And because we're using nitrogen, it liquefies and bursts back. So, we're going to not use nitrogen in the cooling loop here, which means we have to use a heat exchanger, this here, because right. we need to transfer the heat out of the nitrogen, which we're using to cool the generators, into this cooling array, which is now going to be using volatiles. All right, so the blue line going to the uh, cooling is now going to be volatiles instead of nitrogen. Or, wait, sorry. This... Uh, the blue line is going to be connected to the heat exchanger here. All right. But the heat, heat exchange is going to come out and connect to... So basically, we're not using nitrogen to cool the generators. We're using hydrogen? No. We're oh, okay, using okay, nitrogen I get it. to cool right. the generators, but right. we're using the volatiles to cool the nitrogen. Okay. So that'll be part of the cooling network, a separate cooling network, so we're not recycling the nitrogen. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. And these are really efficient. Um, I've uh, two of these should be able to passively cool it. And uh, uh, as I suggested earlier, if you have a a reservoir of cold um, 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 volatiles, if that heats up, you, you then could open that to a bunch of radiators. And when it gets too cold, you close it off and suck it out um, using volume pumps. And that will stop it from freezing because it will still continually freeze until it hits its freezing point. Well, I'm hoping the volatiles are not going to freeze, but we'll see. So, according to Electro, it says his last patch seems to have drastically reduced the active liquid outlet rate of flow. Oh, dandy. It right, still so works. I, I tested it earlier. I, I made sure. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> when it comes to hydrogen, we have 3.58 kilomoles of hydrogen now where do you want that how are you going to transport that over there then the volatiles uh i'm thinking i'm going to purge the nitrogen line okay and then repurpose it as a volatile line oh okay all right all right but i still have to purge the system which is going to take a long time so You guys have a lot of gas and a lot of pipe storage. Yeah, yeah that's kind of cheap. We know that. All right. Oh, I like it. It's mostly colored the way it's supposed to, except for one of them. 
Alright, so we, were up, kinda... we we basically have 10 minutes left, guys. Okay. Yep. You kind of pollute in black, don't you? Do you want this large transformer, uh, then? Yes. Uh, because we're running more than... Well, because the power limit on our transformer is 50 kilowatts, and we might exceed that if all the generators are running, uh, I'm going to stack a second one on top of the first one. Oh, I need to fix this. This pipe is going to... Where do you want me to put it then? What? Uh, this is uh, my pipe. No, no, I'm talking. Stack it on top of the year, the one. Oh, okay. Yeah, over here by the batteries. Gotcha. I saw a large transformer. I was thinking large heat exchange. So you want to stack it right on top of this one? Yep. Okay, maybe. I don't know how, but. <laughs> um. Hang on. Can we? Oh, I can't. I can't flip it. Hang on. Is something in the way? Nope. It doesn't flip upside down. I thought, hey, maybe we can. Um. So you need to. You want to split the inputs and the outputs. Is that what you're trying to do? Um. Does it need to face? Okay. The direction. Does it need to face the same direction? Well, um, no. It just makes the wiring more difficult to deal with, but it's not an issue. Yeah, that'll do. Or do you want it flipped the other way? No, I can make that work. Sure, okay. That's fine. <clears throat> All right, so what did we learn today? That we had too much pollutant in our system and it caused a, well, now we don't have a problem with too much <laughs> in the system. Because I got rid of it all. And that for some reason we had a weird electrical issue that batteries didn't want to charge even though they had stuff going to them really weird then all of a sudden after a complete reset they just started to work all right so i see the recirculation temperature at about 52 degrees celsius they have the, the heaters on so effectively, the recirculation system should, we have nitrogen at minus 45 degrees Celsius, but everything around it is warmer, except for oxygen. What so, did you say the Armstrong limit was, Ben? Uh, I believe it's 7 kPa. 6.7, but I'm not sure if the game's that accurate. Uh, I'll, put a, I'll put a 7, to be sure. Yeah, with seven, you'll be all right. Because uh, the long pipe I've just put in, it's uh, the water is turned to gas. Yeah, quite rapidly. CO2 pressure fell under seven. Does this purge valve? Does anyone, anybody in stream or chat know what happens if you combine, or if I can find three compost items, which are made each of different combination? Of, no, I've never, I have never used any of the compost stuff. Uh, what was the question? Um, if I combine three compost items, which are each of a different combination of ingredients, does it average a whole stack? Not sure it lets you stack things that way, but uh, it it just takes it as um, as biomass. So um, if you stuff in like a load of items, it just turns into biomass. So you can shove uh, whatever you want in there. I think. Too. 
Wings 35. Not really played with them. Apart from I got this, uh, I got this bug from the traders where I just kept getting um, an unlimited amount of items. That's not. That's not fun. It's fun, but not fun. I just I got like stacks and stacks and stacks of spoiled food. I mean, the fertilizer that comes out of the composter, it has a different effects depending upon the composition going in. So if you put basically nine different elements in, are you going to get a evened out nine different elements or whatever? No, I did not know that. I just thought it was the same. I guess you can mix and match different inputs to compost so you get a different composting for different things that are like maybe higher nutrients or higher nitrogen or something like that. Nobody knows. Sorry, Neb. Nope. It's not something I've particularly used, but... So that's getting warmer. Get change. Over. Okay, hopefully I will stop this exploding while I'm not around. Alright guys, about four minutes left. Okay. Uh, by the way, the pressure rent valve is the one that would inject the gas into a liquid line if you wanted to maintain a steady pressure. So that's the opposite of the purge valve? Yep. Oh, I just need to make one real quick fix. Yep. And then that should allow you to just keep dumping water into that thing without having to think about it. Now, do you have any sort of a pressure regulator at the other end? So if I keep adding ice, it's not going to burst something somewhere? Yeah, what I'm doing is um, I'm doing that now. What I was noticing was the line was slowly filling up with um uh, with water vapor because oh, the okay. uh, liquid volume pumps don't pump um yeah. gas easily so yeah, what i'm literally just transfer the liquid yeah so oh, i see you just so you're quickly purging adding. the gas and then i got you okay just so adding any... a condensation valve right. there so there's no longer CO2 in your line here. And if it does get any gas, the purge, which you have set to seven. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that will just keep that line to um, keep everything. Oh, I've got water pipes. It'll keep that line a, a nice liquid. And why not a turbo pump instead of a volume pump? Uh, it's it's fine like that. Okay. Is there not much water coming no, down? Not, no, it will trickle. Oh, yeah, I don't, <laughs> it's not registering hardly any liters here. Okay. Yeah, it will trickle in, and then, right. so this is now already at uh, 600, and when gotcha. I left it, it was at, um... so it will come down this pipe, um, the gas pressure will slowly increase, um, because it's such a large volume of, uh, of pipe. Yeah. It will slowly increase that gas, and this will just keep that from increasing too high, so the pipe doesn't explode. The, the, this little pipe thing here will, um, because as the uh, water comes out, it will hit this pipe, and because there's very little pressure in this pipe, it will instantly condense. So that's what this condenser is for, to turn to liquid, because the pressure in here will keep it as a liquid, and this pressure, this pressure and valve will just pull out the the, the tiny amount of water, but it's really slow. You don't need these uh, small tanks anymore, right? No, no, they're all good. Um, the expansion valve is just... It's not very good, so that's why I'm just using a pressure valve instead. Yeah, that should... Uh... Oh, that looks good. Yeah, and that should slowly, f slowly fill this up. So once that's about maybe four or five thousand liters, that should be as much as I'll ever need. 
and then we can drink that water too. And if it doesn't work with the uh, CO2, I can pull that out quite easily. Right, uh, I need a chair. <laughs> Building you one right now. <laughs> oh, thanks, buddy. But yeah, so that system will hold quite quickly. I haven't connected up the tank and the uh, radiators, so you don't have to worry about temperature control. All right. Has oh, all the ice it. that I collect has already been crushed, or is there still some in the queue? I added in one of the backpacks that had a load of ice in it. Oh, good. I, I thought, I went, oh, there you go. Yeah, nice. So, yeah, so I chucked in this one. So all right. it will now slowly process. Um, you may run into having a lot more nitrogen than you could ever need. Uh, no, so no. Just, That's okay. You can keep an eye on the nitrogen. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, if it goes in, it's too cold. It's going to get warmed and uh, balanced. And then if we get too much, the back pressure regulators should kick in. Yeah. Uh, where is Greenhouse 2? Behind the filters. I'm slowly let my way to navigate. I need signs. Color coded yeah. floors. <laughs> Well, I mean, you could always do a bunch of LEDs, color code them. Yeah. I'm going to turn off our solid generator downstairs. All right. So that actually worked out pretty good, Ben. Yep. So lots of progress to do, but at least we got yeah. a plan. I don't know why all of a sudden we got drained power so far. Much. Um, it must have been those drills. I've turned them off since. So, all right. Everything seems to be stabilizing. Oh, you mean the mining drills? Yeah. Oh, don't open that fridge. There's a skull that's through it. Yeah, you, that, we don't talk about that. <laughs> nope. Uh, my helmet is open. Oh, so we have several models of chairs here. <laughs> I'll let you pick what model then. Oh, okay. my nice a comfy armchair. We are seated, helmets are open. All right. All right, guys, next Sunday. Yep, we'll be there. Yep, I've got nothing else on. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Um, I'll be doing my single-player station years, trying to get some of the smelting, sorting, just very fundamental, basic stuff set up. So um, let's roll some credits here real quick. Credit music. Ben, Kata, we'll see you later. Uh, Flip, Kata, notable. Thank you for, for the resubs, guys. Appreciate that very much. See you later, monster. You have a good one.